Hello, hailing frequencies open. Welcome back to another episode of Shield of Tomorrow, everybody. Sorry we're running a little late tonight. Uh, <laughs> this guy accidentally locked Amy Dallin's costume in a room. And uh, so we, uh, we, it was, we have a very amusing uh, episode of, of Taliesin and uh, Bonnie Gordon trying to break into one of our prop closets. <laughs> and uh, it didn't work. So, uh, but thankfully, uh, Maxwell James came back to the rescue and supplied a key, which turns out opens doors. <laughs> I had yes. no idea. Um, so anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead. Fox Machina now. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> no, don't don't let them know. Don't let them know. Okay. Right. Vox Machina has got a problem with doors, and I, I just want to <laughs> keep watching that happen. Okay. Um, so uh, so real quick, we're gonna, because we started a little late tonight. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just try to blast through the announcements, which will probably, I think, we'll we'll succeed at. Um, uh, I have really nothing except to tell you guys that we're going to Comic Con. Uh, I, I, are we, we're all going to be at Comic Con, oh, yeah? yeah? So yeah, we're going to Comic Con, and we're also talking to anybody who's familiar with our the previous incarnation of the show, TBD RPG. Uh, we might try to stage a meetup. It depends if we can coordinate. I was going to ask you guys, yeah. um, remind me to do <laughs> that like, oh. when we're not live streaming, so I don't put you on the spot. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we're going to try to <laughs> we're going to try to do a, a TBD RPG meetup. I'm not sure. If we can coordinate it or not, it's something I meant to ask everybody, but we've been in overdrive trying to get ready for tomorrow, uh, so I haven't been able to coordinate it. So, but if we can do it, we're going. We're, you're going to be able to find a lot of us at Conaval because we're probably going to be hanging out there. I'm going to be there, so uh, definitely stop by and see us. Um, uh, Hector, bless your heart, is leaving right after the show, <laughs> driving down there. So, 1 a.m. Pacific <laughs> time. <laughs> uh. So, um, so yeah, there's yeah. that. Um, also, I want to give a quick shout out to Spikey who created a uh, GM screen cover for me this week. Um, I have not had the time with all the madness of Comic-Con coming up to print it out and uh, put together the, uh, uh, it on cardstock, but it's gorgeous. I can't wait to show it to you guys. It's got the Sally ride on it, has Shield of Tomorrow on it. It looks amazing. Cool. Um, uh, it, it's fantastic, so thank you so much for that. The thing is rad. Um, I think that's it for my announcements. Let's go ahead and jump into cast announcements real quick. Do, who, which side of the table would you like to start? Let's start with Amy Dallin. Lady Blue Lips, what do you have to say? <laughs> uh, I, no, no particular announcements. Very excited for San Diego. We're all pushing our different schedules, uh, di places. I hope I get to see a lot of y'all. Uh, there's like an alpha community event, which I might see some of y'all yeah, at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the Geek & Sunday has their lounge on the other days, and uh, I'm really looking forward to our panel on Friday at 2.30. Gee, uh, I didn't announce our panel. Well, yes. you were leaving me something to do. Thank That's you. That's true. Yeah, Thanks. no problem. It's totally yeah. planned. I think it's room 5AB, but check that. Uh, I will check it right now as we move on. Yeah. But yeah, I will uh, check it Geek right Sundry now. Geek and Sundry panel. Uh, really looking forward to it. Felicia's going to be moderating, and it's a bunch of my favorite nerds. Yeah, Mama Bird's going to be there. And there might be some special treats at that panel, I hear. Um, yes. Um, for anybody who's a fan of Shield of Tomorrow, we're going to be debuting something uh, at the panel. So don't worry. For everyone who's not going to con, you're still going to see it. It's not going to be exclusive. <laughs> We're just breaking it out at Comic-Con. And then we'll be showing you guys here pretty soon. But uh, that's all we can say for now. But it's pretty good. You can't tell them it's a puppy? <laughs> we, got a puppy. we got a puppy! Well, there it goes. Return the puppy. Come on, you guys. Spaniel, Spaniel of Spaniel tomorrow. tomorrow. Here comes the yeah. fan art. Um, yeah. Real quick, uh, the uh, panel Should is... Puppies. July twenty yeah. first at two thirty p.m. in room five A B. Five A B. Nailed it. Um, mm. So I think that I, I could be wrong. I think that seats five hundred people, but there's probably going to be a line. So if you get there early, um, if you're going to show up, um, yeah, try to make it there. And uh, that mm. is on the Friday. So yeah, all right. Definitely. Bonnie. Uh, check out my social media, uh, my social media and the library bards. Um, tomorrow I'm modeling in the Her Universe fashion show at six o'clock. And then right after that, racing to the Bang Ring event, hosted like Nerds Like Us, and doing a 30 minute library bard set. So come check that out. And then we're all over, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Who knows what I'm doing? I don't even know anymore, but I wrote it down. So look on my social media and it'll all be there. Passing the baton. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, I have said before, and I'll say it again, tomorrow night, um, the improvised generation, my uh, improvised Star Trek TNG inspired show is playing at Old Town Improv in San Diego. And that's only 15 minutes uh, north of the con. So that's at 8 p.m. We have tickets online. Uh, you might want to get them in advance just in case we get packed and we want to make sure everyone who wants to get in gets in. And um, I'm sharing an announcement with Hector because we did a really fun Project Pixel on Monday. Mm -hmm. And Hector's a great artist. Who knew? Yeah. So many what? talents Hector? this one. Hector? Talented? Yeah. <laughs> Draw me Are like one of our women. Dude, <laughs> that <laughs> picture you did of Talon is it's amazing, so great. Hector. What? That's great. It's on my Twitter. Amazing. You can that see the great. picture. 
I love that it. Was you who drew that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I thought it was just randomly tagged in it. I didn't know you drew it. <laughs> no, That's that, crazy. That okay, was, yes. Sorry. And I'm going to have someone color it in. Maybe Max. He oh, might color it in. That'd oh, yeah. That'd be great. Do me, yeah. do me. All right. <laughs> I'll draw, draw all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. That'd be great. What do so you check got? that out. Uh, follow me on Twitter to see what else I'm doing at San Diego Comic Con. That's this weekend. And I don't know if life exists after that. It does, right? We're going to come <laughs> back. I've heard rumors. Keep... Depends on how this episode goes. Cool, cool. We'll have more notes <laughs> next week that Good doesn't involve Comic Con. That's, that's ominous, right. Sam. Like, <laughs> depends right. on what happens this episode. I think you're going to tell the cash and buy <laughs> So, you know. All right. <laughs> Sam, do you have an announcement? Um, well, I will also be at San Diego Comic Con. I don't have a decided schedule. I will mostly be wandering around to panels. You can probably find me. I'm a little bit visually distinctive. Yeah. Um, shout me out. Ask for hugs. You'll probably get them. And if you want to meet up, you might see me at the Vast Meetup uh, Saturday mm. at 3.30 at the Alpha Recharge Lounge, because I am also on Vast on this channel. Yay. It's super cool. But more importantly, tonight, we're playing a Star Trek RPG, <laughs> yep. and I'm excited. Yes. <laughs> what? Um, and in closing, I just want to say um, Tiger Balm is an excellent resource to use for sore muscles for everyone who Sam hugs. Um, <laughs> it will get out mm -hmm. the, the aches that you might experience after your bones are slightly crushed. Mm -hmm. um, but you probably won't feel it because the warmth of love will kind of, it's a painkiller. I've noticed. Mm -hmm. So, uh -huh. but when it does wear off, Tiger Bomb, that's my go-to. Yeah. So, aspirin mm -hmm. helps. I thought that, that was made from real tigers, though, so I don't feel super ethical. What? Recommending that. Mm. Uh, what is yeah, this, yeah. Michael Sheen? So anyway, tigers. <laughs> um, yeah, really so uh, to the so uh, to Star Trek, everybody. Yay! <laughs> the place where tigers are not liquefied into a body rub. Uh, um, I'm not cool with this. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> yes, so moving on, uh, let's go ahead and do a quick recap of our episode. Um, so we kind of left off on a heavy moment, uh, mm. some big reveals in the last episode. Um, real quick, the overall uh, recap is that you guys had landed on Citrian 7, you were making contact with a Zakdorn uh, research colony who had sent out a distress signal. Upon arriving, you encountered a lot of interference and were not able to beam down. You took the Sally ride down in one of the bumpiest rides you've had so far. Through the atmosphere, Ensign Sage was able to successfully land the Sally ride beautifully uh, about uh, not, not too far from the research facility itself. It was a little bit of a trek getting up to the research facility, but a Zach Dorn hovercraft <laughs> trek. Uh, yeah. Zach, Dorn, <laughs> a Zach Dorn hovercraft came and met you and transported um, uh, most of the senior staff who were on this away mission up to the research facility to find out exactly what the hell was going on. When you arrived, you discovered um, you discovered that uh, Dr. Uh, Pranaj, uh, the one who had contacted you via the distress call, had died. And the facility had been uh, the, the, the rank, the, the second in command had taken over. Um, Dr. Uh, I believe, Geet oh, Zerima. Geet Zerima. Geet Zerima. Geet Zerima. She has taken over in her stead. Now, that's all minor revelations. What you have discovered over the course of your stay at this research facility are, it's pretty staggered. Um, you discovered, first of all, that the weather patterns that are battering this entire planet right now are in getting increasingly worse. Um, You've discovered that everyone at this facility was acting a little strange, and thanks to the presence and the, the persuasion of Captain Martinez, you were able to actually get one of these Zach Dorn to sort of break a sweat and eventually try to signal you to help them. Since then, it's been revealed that you might be standing in the middle of a hostage crisis. These Zach Dorn researchers apparently are in danger. And as a result of that, now all of you are too. And as the story has begun to unfold, you have discovered that people are listening in on your conversations and that uh, there is a lot more going on here, especially because the radiation poisoning that Dr. Throlo has detected and a lot of the dying Zactorn researchers um, couldn't be explained uh, where it was coming from. So moving forward, where we left off, Back on the Sally ride, as things were getting a little more intense, uh, Ensign Sage, you went down below with uh, Talon. And 
and two of the and Rhett? You, yeah Rhett, Rhett, Rhett who was one of your security Rhett. detail assigned mm -hmm. to you by Commander Rue um, you all went down into one of the storage facilities just below it wasn't a very large room I would say probably large enough to park two modern day cars lined mm -hmm. with barrels and storage units and whatnot it did have a small two-person transporter pad where they would beam in and out uh, supplies if they needed to um, when you got there, you discovered the transporter unit was not working, which was a little unusual. Mm -hmm. um, you were expecting to find it functioning, but not operating because of the interference in the atmosphere, which is why the Sally Ride couldn't beam people down. Mm -hmm. What you discovered, however, was that it was far more in depth than just that. The transporter unit itself had been sabotaged. There were critical components that had been removed from it purposefully. You think you can jury rig a solution, but it's gonna be tricky and it's gonna take you at least an hour at least. Um, but that's not the big news. As this was all happening, and you were being led back up to the observation deck after being given the revelation that they were listening in, back on the Sally Ride, Jiv and Commander Rue, who were following your orders, managed to get the Sally Ride sensors, that powerful sensor suite that the Intrepid classes have, up and running. And you were able to finally cut through the interference that was supposedly being sent off by the storm. But what you discovered was, is that Lieutenant Commander Talon's initial scientific scan of the anomaly, the gravitational anomalies in the atmosphere, was coming from the fact that the moon is actually getting closer to the planet. Now, at the time, it had traveled 100 kilometers. But the data suggest that that speed is going to continuously increase as the gravitational pull builds its momentum. You were able to dis deter determine that you only had a day before this you had a 24-hour period before this moon was going to collide with the planet's surface. You had 12 hours before the entire planet became completely uninhabitable. Um, you have six hours before the storms become catastrophic, which could be mm -hmm. very dangerous for the Sally Ride, uh, doing an atmosphere, uh, leaving atmosphere, leaving atmo. Um, it, is a, it is an intrepid class starship, so the Sally Ride can probably handle it, but it ain't gonna be easy. Um, the big revelation for Rue, however, was the discovery that not only are there more than just 150 research people on board th uh, this research facility, there are in fact 300 life signs, all Zach Dorn coming from this research facility. A ton of weapons and huge spikes in uh, radiation emanating from what could only be biogenic weapons. Which for those of you who need a recap, biogenic weapons are incredibly volatile, highly illegal, and vicious weapons that specifically target biological life forms. It's the Star Trek equivalent of uh, chemical, chemical warfare. Except for it's on an advanced scale and it is a merciless, horrible, horrible weapon that has been outlawed. Um, it, to give you an idea of how repulsed the galaxy or the quadrants are at large from this, um, it, pretty much every major government has agreed never to uh, use them. Um, yep. We start with Rue. Commander, you just uncovered all of this. As the data feed is like rolling up, you're seeing the life form scans, you're seeing the numbers of, of Zach Dorn is completely contradicting your initial scan. The moon has got you a little worried because that's inexplicable. It doesn't seem to be connected in any way to what's happening here at the research facility. So it's another variable you can't explain at the moment. However, the strange behavior of the Zach Dorn scientist seems to have been somewhat explained by the scans that you've gotten from, uh, from the readings of the weapons and the reading of the, how many life forms there are and the biogenic radiation that's emitting from the facility. And as you're reading the readout, Jiv, who's standing just a few feet away and looking at the exact same information as the sensor suite is just pulling it in, you hear him say something in his native language that you can only assume would not be allowed on the bridge if it was said <laughs> in a, a language that could be commonly understood. Oh, this is an instance for that language to be quite perfectly appropriate. <laughs> he, he turns and looks at you, and he's, a, he's an old sea salt, you know what I mean? Jiv is, he is, he is, um, Jiv has been in Starfleet for a long time. And he turns and looks at you and he goes, Commander, what do we do? Is there any chance we can get comms up and running? 
Yeah, I can do that. I will do that. I absolutely will do that. All right. I'm going to want local comms to the captain as soon as humanly possible, and I want to get a call out on subspace. Regardless of what happens today, Starfleet's going to need to send more ships out here. Well, we don't need any deflector power right now, so I'll just divert energy from that, and I can boost our comm systems. All right, get on it. He swivels out of his chair with great speed and bolts across the bridge over to the engineering section, where he pulls open a panel and sets it aside, immediately pulls out an engineering kit and says, I'm going to have to do this manually. Yep. Ion Storm's making this tricky. And he pulls himself into the thing. And you hear him mumbling, biogenic weapons, are they out of their mind? And he just starts going to work. That's a good question. Um, Was so there cutting, ever any shielding on those biogenic weapons at all? On those sensors? I mean, we can see things from the edge of the star system. I assume at 800 meters, I know what brand of underwear they're all wearing. You mm. should be able to. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, is your sense, Why? especially the Sally Ride, Right. The Sally Ride should be able to detect exactly, you'd be like, oh, I can see that uh, 300 years ago, their ancestor uh, had mixed uh, relations with this ancestor over here. And, uh, you're not getting that at all. In fact, what you're discovering um, as you're looking through, if I remember correctly, you actually rolled really well on that sensor check, yes. which is why you guys maxed out a momentum. Yes. So as you're kind of, you're trying to find the source of the, of the, the interference, even with your training in the sciences, with that kind of role, after getting this data read out, what you're able to discover is that the interference is not coming from the ion storm. It has to be coming from the research facility. There yeah. has to be some kind of jamming signal, or at least something that's confusing Sally Ride sensors. So further probably solidifying your suspicions that there is something military grade taking place. Because this is not, to be, able to, to be able to fool the sensors of a Federation Starship science vessel like this, you have to have some pretty high tech. And it's probably not just the ionization in the atmosphere. That's probably helping, but you should be able to cut through that. You're looking at this route, and you definitely see that you should be able to detect exactly how much, what the levels are, everything. But you're only getting a generalized reading. You're able to pinpoint how many life forms, but you're not getting where they are, if that makes any sense. You're getting a general, you're, the computer is able to ping that many biological entities in the vicinity, but it's not able to place like what levels they're on, what rooms they're in, or anything like that. You're only detecting the presence of that many biological life forms within uh, the research facility itself. Looking not directly at the facility mm -hmm. where there's a presumptive jamming system. Um, you want to try it somewhere else? But looking to see the moon is getting pull is coming in at an angle. Yes. What is that vector? Mm. You want to try to scan that? Okay. Sure. Sure. <laughs> All right. Control plus science. <laughs> I'm, I'm tote science, y'all. You're like, what would Talon do? <laughs> Better. Huh? I thought we were cool. All right. The let me tell you the difficulty before you tell me your, your, your initial result. The difficulty here is going to be two. Uh-huh. Straight up two. Yeah, so let me roll for the ship. Two successes. Two successes. Do yeah. you want, does somebody want to roll for the Sally Ride? Oh yeah, okay. I can't do that right now. I can. I'm doing my own rolls. Yeah. Um, Talon's got it. Talon's got it. Let's so what is blessings that? Sensors plus science? Um, yes, oh, this should be... Should have waited. But. So that's a 15 then. Yeah, and that should be sensors plus science, correct. That further lowers the DC by one, which is great. So great. Okay. Uh, the well. ship rolled an eight, so yeah. definitely got it. Okay, oh, yeah. you definitely it's succeeded. Delightful. All right, so that means we have Sally's two bonus momentum to use on obtaining information. Boom, boom max okay. up. Oh. So you can spin those right now if you want. Right, that's because we're max. Yes. That's exactly oh, what so I want to Oh, so you're going to burn... How many momentum is it? Two. Two. Okay. Um I have two bonus momentum. Instead of using that on obtain information, yep. could I use that on create advantage yes. for there to be a sudden power flux so that I could actually like get a look at the facility or something? Ooh. Yes. Ooh. Yeah, yeah I'd like to do that. Well done, yes, you can Ooh. change the narrative. You can yeah. give yourself an advantage here. So mm -hmm. you can say, so, so I, I get the vector thing, but I also get a-, a So piece. this is how it plays out. So what yeah. you get from the moon as it's getting closer to the planet, it absolutely is being responsible for all the terrific storms that are taking place. That's a okay. given. The vector, the, the where the moon is going to impact, um, is somewhere closer to the North Pole. It's gonna be much closer to the Northern uh, Hemisphere of the planet itself. Um, the computer is, I mean, no surprise, 
this is going to be an extinction level event. It's very unlikely that the planet itself is going to survive this impact. Um, it might be thrown out of orbit altogether. Oh my God. Um, right. Absolutely. It's, it's, it is the, the devastation is going to be astonishing. From what you can tell, the, the Salivaride should not be anywhere near when this happens. Oh, It'll make a hell of a show, though, if you guys can get I out mean, of it. It's not every day you get to see this. It will be quite a bit. So based on the position it ought to have been mm -hmm. um, when the pull started and the vector it's on now, if there's any kind of like directionalized force, basically I'm trying to see if we can infer based on where it should be and where it's heading now and where it will go, whether it got pulled from here. Mm. You're mm -hmm. not. You know what, with that role, I'll tell you this. What you're detecting around the moon isn't just the pull of the, of the moon itself. You're actually detecting a gravitational anomaly that is present in the entire system. Oof. What you're getting Whoa. is that gravitational forces in this system are in a state of, they're not obeying the typical laws of physics. It's almost as if there's a second star that you can't see that's pulling things further away. The gravitational force, to, the, 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 what it would require is, there, there's, nothing, there's nothing in the, technological da in the technology database yeah. that, we could, that could possibly do this. It's almost as if there is a, a, an unnatural uh, cosmic phenomenon taking place. It does not look like it's being caused by anything on the planet. In fact, um, your readings would suggest that in the time since the Sally Ride has landed here, the planet itself has actually moved a bit from its typical or now planets will will do that. Right, but planets it's on a wobble time scale, and sometimes it takes they'll much more move. Force yes, for it to be, yeah. but this one has actually moved slightly off of its axis, um, off of its uh, orbital roll uh, mm -hmm. um, track. Jeez. Yeah. So that actually might be contributing to the storm itself, but. It looks like, the, the amount is almost infinitesimal, but it looks like this planet itself, Citrine 7, also might be getting pulled. All right, I would like to task some of the science officers to go to the astrometrics lab to start working on a point of origin and generally trying to figure out more about that phenomena as okay. we deal with the facility. Yeah. So I want to kind of like start that simmering. No problem. Yeah, the Good science idea. crew is both mm -hmm. excited and horrified. Yes. <laughs> and so. As I would expect from these fine officers yeah. aboard this fine science vessel. Yeah, it, uh, the, the, the scale of what is taking place here is, I mean, it, it, the question is up in the air of whether or not this entire system is going to survive this event. If yes. this is as large scale as sensors are detecting. Um, so because you mean a planet full of biogenic weapons might not make it? Hmm. My heart bleeds. And to, 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 to add to that, as you're kind of putting two and two together, you don't want to be near this research facility when those weapons blow. <laughs> Indeed not. <laughs> However, okay, so if, for example, the moon hits the planet and doesn't completely destroy it, but knocks it off its um, everything, and it just sends it off flying, like, yeah, a we need to destroy impact. the planet, then we don't want it going off into something else, into another, you know, well, I can tell you this right oh, now. Just that from facility can go up if we need it to go up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, not concerned about we our need capability. To, we need to be the one to destroy it if it's not destroyed by the moon, right? Yeah, but I, I how. But definitely, definitely can tell you that it will be annihilated. Yeah, and we're also getting in, more down in to six hours, comms, So in six hours, it's very likely that this facility will be damaged beyond repair. Okay. Yeah. Well, as long in as fact, there's no weapons heading somewhere else in the. I can tell you out of character just from the information that that sh <laughs> that that the sh the the Sally rides getting the ship is getting from from the sensor scans mm -hmm. that uh, that the impact of this moon on this planet nothing is going to survive okay. nothing is going to be left standing this is it's going to turn the entire planet into a volcanic rock in space right but the and planet I can tell you itself, in character rue would have no deficit of blasty to be concerned <laughs> about with any of um, this the, the planet itself could be a weapon hurtling towards another thing and hitting something else. That's yeah, true. That, we'll that's find out what that's it's going to be destroyed. Well, I can the tell you this. Is gonna be I'll, I'll just go ahead and tell you this. What the, the Federation files on the Citrian system, there are no more Class M and hat. There are no more. And there you go. Planets. That's yeah, yeah. all I needed yeah. to know. This I is the only Class M like, planet going, in the system. Oh, look at the pretty. Oh, that's a planet. You know? Mommy, what's that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, yes, as the gemming signal drops from my creation of advantage, yes. I get a nice good look. At what's moving forward? Okay, so this is so to, to, to close that out. To close that out too, <laughs> um, I'll just tell you straight up too, the 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 size of the moon as it's there's no there is nothing you can do to stop the moon's impact. Yeah, I, no. I can tell you now. 
Well, I'm just erasing that opportunity. I mean, unless mm -hmm. you become Q and just suddenly but, sneeze. But, but you know what I want to do, Eric. I know what you want to do. I'm telling you, that's going to be like a flea pulling a dog. I, I would have to start right now, and I don't have time for it. <laughs> what do you want to do? Lasso the moon. I want a tractor beam. Rue wants a tractor, tractor beam. the moon. That's right. But again, a flea pulling a targ. Physics. Kind of what it is. Lasso <laughs> the moon. Um, but okay. unfortunately, <laughs> I would have to do it very early in the process, mm -hmm. or it would take much, much, much more power. Mm -hmm. And I have on. other things to focus on. That's I have, true. more importantly, other people to focus Lives on. To and so I'm going Lives to focus to on say. that, so, not on the awesome of Tractor Beam <laughs> another day. Yeah, another um, day. So, yes. uh, further scans. Now, tell me specifically what you were looking for with these scans. Because you're also, there's a surge. You see, you hear Shiv go, oh, whoa, whoa, and you yeah. hear a pssst sparks coming out from underneath, and all of a sudden the console, uh, you see data flowing in as the sensors get a boost. Yeah, can we capture that in any sense? Oh, it's all being recorded. Great. Yeah, for sure. Um, but, uh, just, so I don't... What, just, just remind me specifically what it was you were scanning for. Um, you, wanted to, you wanted to know more information about the, the facility. I just wanted to know specifically what you were looking for. You were trying to create an advantage so you could get more information. You were yeah. trying to break through the interference so you can get generally... Yeah, I'm trying to just, get a sense, I mean... All of it? Rune wants a, sen a tactical sense of okay. things on the ground. I got you now. That's I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. There's an underground facility. Right. It's underneath the research facility. The other 150 are in the underground. Everything the sensors are telling you is there's a military garrison underneath this yeah. research facility. Um, filled with about 200, 150, something like that. Uh, from the looks of the weaponry that's being, it, it all looks like, it all, none of it looks like Federation issue, but they're all uh, phasers, phaser technology. Lots of them. Mm. Um, and did the phaser signals correlate to anything in our database? Yes, these are Zach Dorn weapons. Okay, okay, that's give me, good to know. To give you some context of what this means though, when the Zach Dorn, just like other Federation species, joined the Federation, oh, oh. militaries, they, they, are, they were no longer, like part of that is you dismantle your military. The diplomatic yeah. incident that has been created this day. Ah! Oh God, ah, it scared me so bad. <laughs> <laughs> when suddenly... <laughs> they all scared of the doctor now. My God! <laughs> the the, the, God, you're left, the gravitational you forces <laughs> pull <laughs> part of my set apart. Oh my God! Oh, <laughs> the <laughs> gravitational... No, and not, and not like, go to the planet. Okay, okay. Don't worry. We we have we have. to knock the camera down and, and hit and it's leaning on the camera. That's right now. Even, yeah. That's I think true. we're fine. Yeah. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> I have faith in our. Too bad career. we didn't. That it's it's too bad we didn't time terrifying. that, so we just didn't take the hit. But here. Oh comes, man. Here comes oh, Chief. Oh, 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 if only we had had the good sense to do a. I was about to say that. If only we. No, that just terrified. But honestly, watching that tear the the hell. Out of, out of Bonnie made that totally <laughs> worth it. Ma oh, uh, man. Hey, Chief, could we do that like once Thank an episode you, and not Chief. plan it? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Nothing falling. Oh, no. Um, so I get like hyper focused and then yeah. Yeah. Oh, no okay. loud noises. Can you loud noises? Loud noises. Loud noises. Just okay. Take it down, so let's get back into so the yeah, game while Chief fixes it. The garrison that. is there. They have non Federation phasers and they have power sources or other areas of tactical weakness. That would be of interest to me. Um, doesn't look, it looks, it, honestly, it looks like this place is fortified pretty well. <laughs> um, from the looks of it, it looks like it's fortified to withstand a possible orbital, orbital bombardment. It looks like whoever built the, the underground facility here, it's also, Sally Ride is also able to detect that it's using uh, Federation technology to jam sensors. Hmm. So. So we can get that to Jiv. Yeah. to modulate. Yes, I mm -hmm. will totally, yes, I could totally work that Groups. out. I could, if you were able to spin momentum for something like that, I could totally work that in and Jiv can get through it. Spin, um, spin it. Uh, uh. They're using fed tech. Now, um, there's probably, you're able to get a precise check. Um, there is probably about 20 warheads inside the facility. Um, wow. It's going to be really dangerous being in that. The, the longer the crew stays in that facility, the longer anybody stays in that facility, yeah. the more dangerous it's going to get with the wetter path patterns outside. Did they incidentally have shielding around these weapons, or are they really just that careless? Um, it looks, your scans would show that the shielding around the weapons is probably degraded, possibly as a result of 
of what's going on out there. Whatever's doing the jamming, whatever's Because the thing is, is the, the research facility has been, power has been going on and off yeah. in the mm -hmm. research yeah. facility a lot. So it's possible that that's what the cause is. Root, I, I, also mean, I also need to tell you, and I totally forgot to tell you this when you were scanning the planet and the weather patterns, um, you can now safely predict that in the next half hour, the planet is going to start experiencing tectonic events from the incoming moon. Because that hasn't happened yet. It's Not yet. in weather, but it's about to be earthquakes and weather. Got yeah, right. we're approaching yeah. revelations kind of stuff going <laughs> on here. Um, the, the more that moon, the closer the moon gets, the more disastrous it's going to be to stay on planet side. And that's going to be really bad for the Sally ride. So yeah. what I would like to do, I remember uh, that the Enterprise has used a tractor beam to induce tectonic instability. I would like to task some tactical officers to investigate our capacity to do the opposite of that. To try to stabilize a yes. tectonic shift? Ooh. Uh, a tractor beam. Yeah. Brilliant. I was looking at tractor beams a lot today, mm -hmm. so I discovered this is a thing. <laughs> your tactical officer said that, it, um, one of your tactical officers tells you, says, sir, if we can coordinate with, I understand that you, we have some of the science people assigned to the to the moon scans and whatnot. If if we could coordinate with their team, we might be able to come up with a scenario for you. All right, take them off. We have thirty minutes till shake time anyway. <laughs> they have more time than we do. Okay. Get uh, on that. The Bajoran nods and says, uh, "I can't, uh, Commander," and runs. You see, like <laughs> the stress getting to some of the crew members um, as he runs think. off the bridge. All right, Jeff, where are we on communications? I They're talk to up captain. right about. Now I'm going to roll for him. Hmm. <laughs> right about. Context, no, so. he's going to eat his words no. if I roll poorly. <laughs> I'm going to set the difficulty at three for Jiv. Um, Can we Jiv, give him momentum? I was going to ask, uh, yes. on behalf Please. of Jiv, I'd we like to burn momentum if that's cool with you guys. How, many, how much? One, two? One, just one. Okay. Jiv is pretty yeah. good at his job. Hmm. All right. Difficulty is two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, oh, yeah. Three successes. What is that? Four? Communications. Wait. Yep. Engineering. Uh, yes. Yes. And an additional, so we get that back. So more momentum. Yay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sally. Uh, Thank you, Sally. Actually, that would probably be. Eh, it's fine. That'll that'll totally work for now. Yes, that'll work for now. Um, so yeah, you're gonna get back a momentum from Jiv mm -hmm. as well. Oh, so we're uh, so you're maxed out. Yeah. So I'm gonna sp so I'm gonna oh. so I'm gonna spend that immediate momentum. Yeah. To uh, to get a clear channel. Yeah. So Jiv nice. is going to spend that one momentum that he's gonna get because he can't pull it, mm -hmm. and I'm just gonna get a direct link to. Uh, actually, you know what? Jiv is gonna spend that momentum to get you a secured link to the captain. Ooh. Good. Good. Because that's what nice. he needs. That's what we need. Jiv <laughs> sticks his head out from underneath. He's like, I got you a secured channel. I don't know how long it's going to last, Commander. Strong work. Well done, Commander. Thank you, sir. Um, Captain? You're walking up onto the observation deck. Okay. Um, I believe, were you walking up there with Lucal? I have Is that who was leading I was you? with Lucal, and I think that our other security person, <coughs> yeah. Yalor, Yalor. Yalor, was with... Uh, Rhett's with them. Uh, Rhett's with us. Yeah. Right, right, right. right. You're right. You're right. I think we it. left Yalor with with the doctor. Uh, with with doctor. the doctor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our I question think. was whether you took Doctor Bob with you. He thought you did, and you thought you were just Correct. taking. Correct. What Dr. we decided Bob. was the doctor stayed with you. Yeah. Doctor yeah. stayed with you, and Lacal went with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I am Correct. just with Lacal. That's right. Yeah. All right. Cool. So as you step up. Uh, and also, Eric, just a quick. Yeah. How much do does Martinez know about everything that was just discussed? Okay. So right now, everything that just happened, you're about to learn. I'm guessing from okay. from your first officer. Um, right now, all you know is that you and your away team are in a spider's web. Mm -hmm. You guys are here in this facility. You're clearly being listened to. There's clearly imminent danger. You don't know specifically who it's coming from. You know that there's a radiation link that's endangering everybody in the facility. You know that there's people downstairs in the sick bay right now that are dying from radiation exposure and they need immediate medical attention. And the only way they're going to get that is on the Sally ride. Mm -hmm. Throlo is doing a brilliant job at trying to relieve pain and keep them alive, but she just doesn't have the tools she needs to treat radiation sickness. And yeah. some of them are so advanced, they're gonna need to go into critical care immediately. Um, so the situation is growing dire. And as you're stepping up onto the observation deck, you can clearly see from across the landscape, off in the distance, uh, funnel clouds forming 
uh, and tearing up the landscape. So the storms outside are getting far worse. You can also see um, that beautiful uh, gray slope of the Sally Ride just uh, off in the distance near one of the tree lines, uh, ah. near an open field. Cool. Um, the sheets of rain are kind of blocking a little bit of your view, but there she is. Um, and then you hear a chirping sound that apparently Lucal looks oblivious to. It comes through your, you can hear it through your comm link, but you basically hear a comm established uh, clear, loud and clear mm -hmm. in your helmet. You oh, still have your helmet right. on, correct? Yeah, we, we all still have our, our suits yeah. on, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, it's our so this is for dramatic asides. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Martinez here. Captain, we got a secure line. Go ahead, Rue. Wait, secure line? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> this was, in fact, real bad. All right, give me the details. Well, the moon event appears to be cosmic, astronomical of some nature, and not directly related such that we can find. We're still working on the origin of that. Okay. But we are 30 minutes to major tectonic events, six hours till we don't want to be here anymore, and it might be real hard to even take off. This planet goes bust in a day. <sighs> Understood. All right. You want the bad news? <laughs> By all means, sure, yes. The radiation we detected is coming from a secondary facility underground with 150 more men. It's a military garrison containing biogenic, I repeat, biogenic weapons. They are armed with non-Federation phasers and should be considered in flagrant violation of everything. Interstellar law. <laughs> Basically, wow. everything that has ever been signed. <laughs> yeah, it's a good way of putting it too. <laughs> or data pad, or stone tablet. <laughs> Cut to like four billion <laughs> years like, in the past or whatever. We have no capacity king, 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 to overwhelm them militarily. This is far too well fortified. It will be a risk even to attempt transporting them if they are still hostile. My God. You're on a time bomb. <sighs> All right, any more good news for me, Commander? All right, has got real good sensors. Good, that's good to hear. Good work. <laughs> good work to you and uh, uh, Ziv, I imagine. Yes. You both did. Ziv did Ziv, excellent fantastic. work. Fantastic. I'll be sure to uh, write that up in your reports if we manage to survive this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Don't say the word. Uh, can you do me a favor? Can you signal the rest of the crew, if possible, on this on this secure channel and let them know as well, the rest of the away team? Shiv looks at you and says, I'm pretty sure I can do that. Okay. Okay, good. I'll do what I can to, uh, to begin evacuating people as fast as possible. What are the transporters looking like on the ship? If we're not directly up on sensors, we should be able to get transporters offline. That's three transporters. 100 people per hour per transporter, so that should be half an hour of Jib total says, transport time. Commander, if I can divert power from the deflector shield, mm -hmm. I can get power to get through the interference, the ionic interference, and use transporters. The problem with that is it's going to make us even more unstable if tectonic activity starts. Because we're uh. using that right now for our stabilizers. Yeah. Commander, you said 30 minutes before tectonic activity begins? Aye, sir. Fantastic. All right. Um, as of right now, Talon and Sage are attempting to repair the transporters here to see if we can help with that. And uh, uh, Dr. Shiros is doing what she can. You know that she's a miracle worker, but we don't have a lot of time. So I'm going to do what I can on my end, but if you can uh, uh, get on that clear channel, on that secure channel rather, and let everybody on the away team know exactly what's going on, it will make my job easier, Commander. Captain? Yes, thank you. Sir, I think we should get you out pretty soon. There's not much good to be done if this is mostly transporter work, and I don't want to have our captain and the better part of our crew sucked up into this. <sighs> I understand, but I have yet to meet the lovely Dr. Geet Zarima, and I have a feeling that I'm going to have to do some convincing on my part. So, um, Transporters are very convincing. <laughs> Holding cells are excellent places for interviews. That's a good point, Commander. Good we point. want us in a point of our leverage, not hers. That's true. And I want you 
out and safe, sir. The right. call at this point has stopped and is staring at you, noticing that you're having a conversation. Yeah. But the call isn't interrupting. They just yeah. kind of, they're watching you talk and just kind of like looking around mm -hmm. to make sure no mm -hmm. one's coming is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. The observation deck is completely vacant except for the two of you. <laughs> uh, hmm. Commander, I'm not going to beam out until I'm sure that uh, my team is safe and that they're on the ship. And as soon as that happens, and as soon as we get Dr. Shishiros what she needs to begin this process, then, then we can make that happen. But um, I'm going to check in with you again in about 15 minutes. But thank you, Commander. Hi, sir. Slide <coughs> right out. Um, you hear the call me bleep off, and the call's looking at you, and it's just, they, they look like they're staring at you waiting for you to say something. The call, I've got terrible news. Uh, in 30 minutes, tectonic activity is going to start on this planet. What? And hours after that, it's going to become uninhabitable. Yes, you're going through a cosmic planet-ending event, and we need to get every single body in this facility onto my ship as soon as possible. I've asked you to help me in the past. You've been helping me, and I'm going to need you to continue to help me with any, in any way that you can. Uh, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but you'll be fine. Uh, Stick with me. You're going to be okay. Uh, uh, wait. Take a moment to process it. Take as much time as you need. The Take about 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, oh, the planet's going to be destroyed? Yeah, that's what I just said. Uh, Talon? Lieutenant um, Commander Talon? You all hear that? Oh, so we, now we have, because we didn't have it before, but now we do. Yeah, I, I, I'm no, no. trying to remember. Was, was I able to? We could not communicate Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the interference, um, the, because you remember you guys tried to contact yeah. and nothing was happening. Okay. Um, Jiv has actually, part. I'm, I'm saying part of Jiv's role is he's basically threaded to communication. Oh, great. Right, at 800 you guys meters, are, you can use a carrier wave kind of thing. Okay. You guys are literally, you're literally talking through the Sally Ride. He's carrying your signal mm, and bouncing you. it back yeah, to you guys. Oh. The Colorado. That's how he's securing the system. The Jiv is good at what that he does. Is, mm. That's an yeah, engineer yeah, yeah, yeah. right there. Okay, nice. cool. Oh, words. Yes, Captain. Yes, Captain. Uh, what's the update? Uh, what's the status on the transporter? This is going to take us at least an hour, Captain, but uh, we're going as fast as we can. Uh, there's only two pads here, so it, it, I don't know how useful it's going to be, but at least we can use them for something. Is that the shortest amount of time that you can get this done, or do you need more bodies to help uh, you? I think we can... I think with the two of us, we can get it done quicker. We were just giving you worst case scenario. Uh, pause right there. And I need Lark and I need Talon to roll control plus security. All right. Okay. Oh, now oh, we know what a perception check looks like in this game. I'm not a very good secure person. What's the difficulty? Um, the difficulty is going to be like one. Oh, for both of them? Oh, I'm sorry, two. Sorry, two. two. Ooh. Yeah, two oh, here. one success. Okay, hold on. Two. One success. All right. Two. All right. Yeah, yeah. We so successed. We, did it. we successed all over that place. <laughs> um. <Ooh>. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But Thank you very much. <laughs> um, okay. Captain, we can get it done quicker. We were just giving you the worst case scenario. I'm going to repeat that. Uh, that's not the worst case scenario, Ensign. The worst case scenario is what is actually happening. Uh, in about six hours, catastrophic storms will continue to pummel the planet. Uh, uh, actually, I don't know that information. I didn't get that. Yeah. All I got was, yeah, did. I did get that. That's I right. Did. In yeah, yeah. 30 okay. minutes, tectonic activity is going to start, and it's going to make all of our jobs way more difficult. <laughs> Six hours from now, catastrophic storms are going to pummel into the facility. 12 hours from now, the surface of this planet will be uninhabitable. And 24 hours from now, the moon is going to hit the north pole of this planet. Um, and then we're going to pause again, because as both Talon and Lark are hearing this information, um, you're sitting there listening to this, uh, Talon, and all of a sudden you feel something push up against the base of your skull. Yeah. Gently, but enough to like move your head a little off to the <laughs> side. And Lark, as you turn, you see there are two, um, there are there are two armored Zakdorn with phaser rifles that have crept into the room, and one of them has a phaser rifle pressed up against Talon's back of Talon's head. Where were there you, Rhett? A, Where were you, buddy? What happened, Rhett? Yeah. Rhett Where's currently that? also has a phaser rifle of course he does. pressed up against him and has got his Damn hands it, up. Rhett. And you see a third, a third uh, Zach Dorn with, a, with armor on just takes the phaser out of his hand and slides um, it in too. Can I use my unknown 
talent of ventriloquism <laughs> to let the captain know that we're being ambushed. Um, <laughs> Wait, what? Inside Sage has very bizarre hobbies. Um, they can't hear us though, so. It doesn't matter, they can see our lips move and they'll know we'll be communicating, they'll probably shoot us. You, you get the we impression that, that <laughs> if you try to alert anybody, mm -hmm. you're taking a big risk. Can I do like, hey, You Captain, might be risking getting... Talon's life. Oh, shit. Okay, if you, well, then. If you tried to. <laughs> but ventriloquism, they won't know. Is there anything, right? just a I, 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 I gotta ask, is there anything on our suits where we can communicate with each other? through beeps and boops. They're gonna say red alert, red alert, mm -hmm. um, SOS. <laughs> yeah. I think it's entirely possible Morse to use code. a tricorder or at least some kind of uh, distress signal on your suit to we signal. text each other, right? It's oh. the future, we can text I would each say other. that there's probably a way to <laughs> ping or use a dis yes. mm -hmm. every Every survival suit, especially yeah, if it's in space, better. especially if yes. you get lost adrift in space, you can you can activate basically a sensor that pings people to let you, them know where you are. That'll mm -hmm. be way better. So they can I'll triangulate you. instead of my control um, But uh, Instant Sage. Yeah. I'm still on the ground. Being on yeah, the ground in, right in Sin Sage, it, with your Starfleet training and Talon with your Starfleet training, you know that it's also entirely possible. You you know that it, first of all, you're not sure this is a secure line, right? Oh. And yeah. it's entirely possible that that if you try to alert, there's just there's a variable. You can try it, but I'm, I, as your GM, I'm letting you know there's a lot of information you don't have yet yeah. about how, uh, if they're listening in or whatnot. So you might be risking your lives. Yeah. Maybe but I leave it to that. you. Maybe she doesn't. It's entirely possible they don't hear a word that's being said right now. Right. But like just, as, but as, as, as your Starfleet training, you would know that that's a variable. In like what's as I'm getting up, could I like, you know, you know, like being putting the tools down to pretend like I'm like, whoa, okay, I'm getting up. Like um, pushing myself up, like do something in there, like distress. The anything. moment you start to move, one of them, you see him oh, like flex it against, and the other one says, ah, 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 ah. Never mind. I say, is there a problem? Oh, yes. Come with us. May I ask? You surely can. Come with us. I must know before we move to another location, are we being taken under some type of arrest? <sighs> is the line still open? Can the captain hear this? Because um, we were just I talking believe with so, him. yeah. If you want to... Because this happened right when we were giving yeah, information. I, I mean, that's why I'm saying us. this, so the captain knows what's happening, yeah. Oh, by the way. good that's job. Smart. That's, that's way better than Twilight Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah well, that. I should have okay. thought of that. Um, I'm going to say yes. Because, I mean, the line didn't <laughs> that's true. close. For I'm going to say yes. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I'm like, Lucal, you, you need to take me where they are right now. Lucal says, right now. Uh, they, they should be in the storage room. Yes, I'll, I'll take you there right away. Let's go. Lead me to it. The two of you turn around. The Zach Dorn says, one more word out of your mouth, Vulcan, and I'm gonna fire. You understand? Do you understand? <laughs> Follow me. He raises the rifle and the other two like fall in behind you guys. Um, we're gonna cut to the medical facility, a floor above. Um, doctor, you are working <laughs> as fast as you can. Um, there's one Zach Dorn researcher who's coming in and out of consciousness, she, her skin is displaying horrible side effects of radiation sickness. It looks like they've had direct exposure almost. Um, probably has been saturated in this radiation for, like I said, weeks before. She looks like she's had the worst of it. And you're seeing like bubbles appearing on her skin. It looks like there are, it almost looks like second degree burns. Um, <clears throat> And her eyes keep rolling back, and she keeps saying n a name over and over as you're scanning her. Um, Dr. Bob just says, it's the name of her mate. He died about a week ago. Same, same, uh, same condition. I'm gonna reach over for a pad. Okay. And I'm gonna type onto that pad, uh, These people are going to die. Help me. And just hand it to him calmly. Bob looks at it and says, I, I, I don't have enough to work with, Doctor. I, I don't know what I can do to save them. I don't know what I can do. All I've been able to do is ease their suffering. If we could get them out of here. And at that point you hear, the doors open up 
and the heavy footsteps of multiple people entering the room. And as the two of you turn, you see about 10 armored Zakdorn in black armored suits come filing into the room with phaser rifles. Not Federation issue. One in the lead comes stepping forward, clearly the leader, because he has very pretentiously decided to decorate himself in military medals and regalia that don't, rec- that don't seem to have any association with the Federation whatsoever. He steps into the room. For Zach Dorn, he's about the same size as any normal Zach Dorn, broad shoulders. He has that arrogant, sort of highly intelligent, critical mind um, that gives him a look of pure, just pomposity as he steps into the room. He has two phasers at both sides as he steps in and folds his hands behind his back and says, well, I had hoped it wouldn't come to this. Are you here to help me with my patients? <laughs> Take her. And they all begin to file in. Um, the doctor, as they surround the two of you, he says, please, no. She's helping me. You don't understand. She's not doing anything. We're doctors. She's just helping me put their pain at ease. The man steps forward and says, Dr. Bob, I appreciate that. And I don't want our kin to suffer. Of course I don't want them to suffer. But we're compromised now. And there needs to be a new solution here. I'm also aware that some of your fellow research assistants have been helping them. I don't think that we were just listening in. And the doctor looks flustered. His eyes dart to you and says, if you're going to kill me, fine, but at least let me do what I can for them before you do. No one's dying. We're not here to kill anybody. Correction, some of these people are dying. Hmm. Dr. Throlo Shishiros. Dr. Throlo. Of the USS Sally Ride. The Federation starship that landed not too long ago. We received your distress call. It's a good thing we came. Yes, I suppose it is. Turns out there's a bit of bad weather outside right now. Looks like we're going to need a way off planet. (laughs) Ah! You see him turn to the doorway as uh, Talon and Lark are led in at rifle point. (laughs) You see their hands up as they come filing in. Um, There's another 10 uh, of the Zakdorn in here, all armored up. Uh, There is one officer, however, uh, middle-aged for Zach Dorn. Um, pretty, gen- I would say, general appearance. Nothing spectacular about him. Has that same sort of receded hairline, that same arrogant look in his eyes. Talon, the Zach Dorn, even for Vulcans, the Zach Dorn are highly respected because their intellect is so incredibly keen. If you need a refresher for people who have watched TNG, Zach Dorn are one of the species that actually fought Commander Data to a stalemate in that game that they were playing. I forget the name of the game, but it, it was also one of the tacticians that was up against Riker. Stratagema. Um, yeah. Stratagema, that's Stratagema. what it was. Yeah, yeah. Stratagema. Yeah. 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 Um, yes. Like finger lights. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, beat Commander Data the first time they played, stalemate the second time. Well, stalemate, technically, in my opinion, Data won because he rage quit in the middle of it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, Data couldn't, Data couldn't beat him, so Data fought it to a stalemate. Um, so to give you an idea, that's the level of intellect. So the Zach Dorn, they're not fools. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not the D&D equivalent of goblins in Star Trek. In this case, uh, as a Vulcan, you, you know for a fact that their species is very calculated, very intelligent. Um, from the looks of this one, as you're walking into the room, just looking him up and down, you can tell he's clearly made himself the leader. Um, he's also a, a, a bit older, and from the look of him, you might say that he, just like the rest, are probably military, which again, contradicts what Zach Dorn should not have a military. Mm-hmm. So that's the situation. Um, well, about- good. You want off the planet, and we want to rescue you. It sounds like we have a lot in common. You will want to have a productive discussion with our captain, and of course you will want to put down these weapons? Well, if the situation were different, Doctor, I would agree to all of that. But the problem is, is your starship has scanned this facility multiple times and has actually succeeded getting through our interference web which means your captain 
knows too much. And at about that point, Lucal stops in the hallway. As he's, you guys were on your way down to the storage area, um, Lucal stops in the doorway as a few of these men turn around. Um, and about that point, Captain, you see Lucal stop and you see what he's seeing. Through this doorway is a room full of military personnel. Uh, it, you can't see all the way in, but from the looks of it, you think they have weapons, and it looks like a few of your crew members are inside. Commander Rue, Martinez to Sally Ride. Martinez to Sally Ride. Um, let me roll for Jiv real quick. Mm -hmm. See if he can get you, because yep. he is detecting. Sally Ride is detecting that you are trying to communicate. So let me see if Jiv yep. can get a, com a secure channel through you. Oh, yeah. This is so stressful. Oh. My cream soda's almost gone. Oh my god. <sighs> We're forcing the cream soda to disappear. Oh, I um, do. Is it cool if Shiv spends another point of momentum? Mm. Yes. Of course it is. Because um, he really doesn't want to screw this up. Have we started a new scene or is this all one scene? I'm going to say this is all one scene. Oh, okay. This is kind of all happening Oof. at once. We're kind of shifting yeah. between... Uh, okay. We're intercutting, but yeah. we're not... But it's the same I scene. Tried. Okay. It's part yeah. of the same yeah. sequence. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Cool, cool. Okay. Ah! Because, because it's all been in real time. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, do it. Right. let me grab my dime real quick. Right, right. Jiv ruled <laughs> really, it. really passionately. Florida eyes don't count. Florida eyes don't count. Wow. Whoa, this where did we go? Eric we oh. all wanted to see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the Wonder best snort laugh stress. yet. Okay, Wonder was <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> do we roll for her? Uh, uh, yes, so I'm going to ask you to roll. So yeah, this, is, this time it's going to be communications and mm, I'm going to say communications and con, just like right. last time. Tell me how many successes you got. The difficulty on this is going to be three. I mean, I'm just rolling the assist. Right. Um, there, and but this is, the assist is going to happen. So what'd you get? Um, one over target. One over, oh! mm. um, it's okay because Jiv rolled a one, a five, and a ten. <laughs> so, Excellent. So, so four. that's three successes. Yeah. So four, four, even four. Yeah, four. Jiv is Jiv juicing the Sally Ride's power system. Was that? Did Jiv have, <sighs> have a focus? That, yes. So that was like twenty momentum. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it might be enough. Well, the question is whether it's enough. Actually, for an let me look at Jiv's focuses here. Uh, metallurgy, warp field, dynamics, computers, hand to hand. I'm going to say, uh, no, not computers. Definitely metallurgy. Definitely yeah. metallurgy. You can't get systems metallurgy. up and running as a focus. <laughs> you hear metallic coming through. Also, I see through. your space dwarfs. Don't think I don't see your space dwarfs. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Um, I'm not going to have a focus kick in on this. Okay. However, um, but he's still going to. You're still going to succeed. Yeah. Um, you hear uh, once again. You hear the direct line open up. Okay. Um, so Captain, you've got seconds to communicate with Rue. Secure channel. Yep. Jiv's got you patched in. Commander, lock on to Dr. Shishiro's signal and get everybody in her vicinity who has a weapon and beam them to the brig immediately. I repeat, beam everybody with a weapon to the brig immediately. Shiv looks at you alarmed and immediately pushes himself out and jump. He's, he's once again underneath the panel, like juicing the system to get a secure line, but he closes the panel and goes, oh, okay, 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 okay. He gets on the, uh, the panel itself and he says, I, I, this is a 50-50 chance. I don't even know if that's gonna work. Flip the coin. Request permission to spend momentum. Yes. 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 How many do um, you need? Yeah, exactly. Um, and can uh, anyone assist with this? <laughs> well, we can. We're Shiv not is going um, to. Only Rue well, can. Well, well we're not yeah. on a ship, though. I'm a commanding officer. I can assist. Wow. Yes. Great. So great. 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 <laughs> there's ten people in that room. You're not going to be able to. Ten with weapons. What's that? Ten with weapons. Mm -hmm. Everyone's armed. So, what are the capabilities of, of transporters? How many people at a time can they transport? Um, we have. Uh, Jiv, Jiv would probably tell you, uh, and, and will say, in, in the in the process of trying to do this, I wouldn't risk more than six. In in this in these circumstances, more than yeah, six. Yeah, in this. And I feel I like if it wasn't clear, I wanted to communicate. You want to do a site to site. Yeah, but also that like basically grab as many as you can because even just transporting six of them is going to that's going to affect morale. Exactly. <laughs> yes. It's going to help our odds. <laughs> so confusion. We might be able to outnumber them. This isn't an yes. all or nothing situation. Sure. This is a like let's start getting them. It's also worth noting you'll outnumber them at that point too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how, many how much momentum do you would you like to take? So, as an NPC, I would 
I, 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 playing this as a player character, I'd probably want to spend as much as I can. Yeah. Because this is a big role. I'm we gonna got look, but you. This is your momentum pool, so I'm going to say, Does what do you want Shiv to spend? Does he have any determination that would apply here? Yes, Shiv, um, Shiv's determination. I would determination. like him to do that now. I so, think this is when he's put to the test. Too. Okay, so to give the audience at home an idea of what we're talking about, determination is something every character has when the character is created. It's a value. You get a value at the start of the game. And values could be something like, I want to protect Bajor from Cardassians. I believe solely in the Prime Directive. Um, I don't believe in the no-win scenario. Things like that. Um, you can sometimes call upon your inner belief as a Starfleet officer to push you one step further, to give it all you got to bring you that much closer to success. It's like in the old days of Doctor Who, it's like spending a story point. In this case, it's like spending, or in D&D, it would be like spending a point of inspiration. It would be like, basically, it's, it's a juicer. You're able to pump your character to get everything that they believe to their core to get the job done. Um, you can usually, you, get, you start the game with one determination, and that's the, uh, that's the point that you spend in order to activate your value. So. The way it's going to work is um, Jiv is going to spin that point of determination. Let's see what his values are real quick. Uh, I've got them written down here. His values are engineer at heart. If it's difficult, it's worth it. And I love ah, my work. But, mm. I love my work, but I've done my part. Ooh, Ooh we'll get to that well, one later. Uh, ouch. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> if it's difficult, it's worth it. I'll yep. allow that. I think that's mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Because uh, I'm going to say. Yeah. This is probably going to be so, difficult. So, Jiv is going to use. Um, now, you can use. You can, you can burn determination to get the advantage in multiple different ways. Um, rather than burning uh, time and looking it up, I can tell you right now that one thing you can do automatically. Right, get the. Is you can, burn, you can burn it to immediately gain a critical success. You get a d20 that's rolled a one, essentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Jiv is going to go ahead. If you guys want him to do that, Yes, is that in yes. addition right. to the so, max five pool, uh -huh. or is it part of the max five pool? Um, it max What's five. That? You you can only buy up to five dice for a roll. Does that count? Nope. This one it counts no? against the number of it, uh, like spend that we oh, can do. Oh, you, you're talking about the number of advantage dice you can buy right. to, to like roll higher. We yes. have you buy that one first if yes. you want to buy another momentum. That, that one technically counts, which is why they didn't phrase it, you get two free successes. They okay. phrase it as you, you gain a d20 that's okay. rolled a one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, it does count. Okay. Yeah. So uh, So he's got an automatic critical success before the roll is even happening. What is the difficulty on this? The difficulty is going to be three. Okay. Okay. So, so he's, he's already two got already. two. He's got two. So you're probably going to get some momentum from this. I would say, yeah, let's have him use one, yeah? To get another dice. Uh, yes. Roll 3d20. Yep. Yes. All right, yes. cool. And then I have an assist as commanding officer, and Sally Ride has an assist. Okay. Yo, uh, it's <laughs> almost like I want to get this right. Ooh. I, do I, don't I like roll? that face. I don't like that face. Does he have any reroll abilities? Do I roll? Um, oh, I have the two successes. Of course I roll. Yes, you're going to roll. He succeeded, but I also rolled a complication. Ooh. So um, one, so one gets this was, out, right? let's okay. see. Um, oh, what's the ship for this? Um, oh, that's right. So this is going to be, oh God. I'm gonna rule that this is a, let's see. What would the Sally use here? I'm gonna say sensors okay. and okay. engineering. Oh, sweet, so. Sally's good at this. Does bring the uh, DC down one because sensors. Uh, okay, I'll allow um, that. Yeah. And then sensors engineering um, is a hit. Um, because this is like a command assistant, I've been establishing a rapport. Do I get to use my mentoring focus on this? I think I'd allow that, yeah. All right. I think this is a pretty critical moment, and I'll, I'll allow you to juice that. Yeah. All right. Three successes for me. Three successes. Okay. Woo! Let's put that momentum back. You succeed spectacularly, but there is a complication. But we succeed spectacularly. Mm -hmm. um, like bo bonus momentum up to whatever. Does that mean all ten of them get transported, or six of them? No, or? it means the six get transported. Okay. Gotcha. Does it mean that I thought to ask the Colorado to use the transport for the remainder? Because that's what I wanted to do. The Colorado actually um, is just now. I would because we have her up and out. Yeah, we we haven't checked in on them specifically to use the transport. Yes, to to bounce. Yeah. Um, this is sort of like an emergency and I transport. It with tactical straight. officers. No, it's it's just like like usually you use a runabout transport. Yeah. Plan here's the problem. He, is Martinez said yeah. site to site to the brig. So yeah. Yeah. these people are going straight from research to Sally Ride. Yeah. Well. Otherwise, yeah. I mean, technically, 
technically the Colorado, which is sitting patiently waiting in the middle of a cornfield oh, right now, sir. is technically a brig because it's going to be somebody beaming into a well, swarm of tactical officers. Would you mm -hmm. interpret it that way? Because <laughs> if I had to... <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> No, um, if Rue were taking initiative and not quite obeying the captain's orders. So a complication did take orders. effect. Here's what happens. Yeah. Um, in an instant, um, as the captain rounds the corner, you all notice that as Captain Martinez rounds the corner with Lakov, there is no anxiety in the captain's eyes. In fact, the, all of you, you've seen this before in him. As he turns the corner, Martinez looks... He looks restrained, but if you didn't know any better, he looks pissed. Which is an unusual look for a man who's dramatically outnumbered and in a situation where y'all are surrounded. He doesn't, and it's all answered instantly when there's a blue glow and that beautiful humming sound as you watch six of these Zakdorn just begin to beam out all of a sudden. And you see the leader just what looks completely taken off by this. Uh, those six immediately are beamed straight into a holding cell, which is waiting for them. Force fields up. Here's the complication. Oh. The transporter did not deactivate their weapons when they were beamed into the holding cell. Oh no. Is gonna be my ruling on that. Um, this is gonna be a side effect of so much trying to be juggled, getting them through the ionic effect. Um, you were able to successfully completely get them out. They are contained. You don't know for how long. All right. So if you get it, to answer, I know what's going to happen next. Yes, a security team can get down there immediately and make sure that. I thought that was what happens next. Oh, you're just going <laughs> to. I'm going to beam them into space. Let's just get this over. Yeah. <laughs> you're just going to happen. I'm going to beam them to the moon. moon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Give them no, a front row I seat to the apocalypse. You're going to get closer you're gonna there. I want to dude. seal the deck. Oh, okay. I don't want to send someone down there right, right now. I can take care of that in a moment. Seal the deck. Okay. I don't need to have more people in there. They can shoot at absolutely nothing because the deck is sealed. You can get force fields up yeah. in place, no problem. So okay. if they get through um, those force fields, they can deal with the next force fields, and the next, and they will slow them down until I can resolve the situation with the captain. Um, it's, it's, it's easy for me to say that even though they do have activated mm -hmm. weapons, Sally Ride's inner force fields will yeah. shut them down. There's, yeah. mm -hmm. there's, and there's also nothing to say that you can't beam their weapons out in the yeah. next few minutes if you I want will to. worry about them in a moment. But to let you know, they are armed and dangerous in the holding zone. And hmm. how many are left now in the medical bay? Four. four. Those are for me. Okay. Including the commander. Can I? So three. Those are for me. Can I take <laughs> them out? Can I? <laughs> <laughs> to long was four, to get her battle. Yeah, line. I mean, um, can I roll for just to, like take you know all take right. a couple of them? Out? Start the party so <laughs> you're not armed. I'm uh -huh. just. I'm just. I'm. I'm going to paint the picture for you, and then yes. you can make your call. Oh, you're not armed. Oh, they're, Element they're weapons. Of surprise. <laughs> It would be surprising. Yes. The, we I all would, have some type of hand-to-hand yeah. -hand I'm going to rule training. this, that the beam out is actually going to give you all the elements of surprise here. They did not see that coming. Mm -hmm. So all of them, except for perhaps the leader here, looks like they've been completely taken by surprise. The leader is I shocked, but it looks like he's in control. Are they also wearing biosuits? They're wearing armor. They're oh, not wearing right. helmets. This They're not wearing helmets. This is going to factor in a big portion of what's about to happen. The soldiers that were holding Talon and Sage, did they get? Ah, moved? that's a good question. Or yeah. are they yeah. remaining? Because if they're gone, which six? And they're right. just there, that's a great and there's question. four other. Yeah, because like, like, we had. You know what we can us. do? We know what we can do with that. Yeah. With this? Yeah. Um, I'll do this. I'll make a deal with you. If you spend two momentum, Ooh. I'll say it was. I'll say it was the ones that were holding guns An to your crew created. members. Correct. Two momentum. Uh, changing a fact about the same. There you yeah. go. We are that's down it. to four. That is exactly what I want. To okay. Have. So yes, the ones that had weapons pointed at their backs of your crewmen mm -hmm. have beamed out. To lie, okay. As you um, were. Okay. Uh, as well, you were about to be. There are still. Yes. There are still. There are four left. Three of them are armed, and weapons are drawn. And they are And the commander, who's also armed, his weapons are not drawn. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to give Talon. Oh, we don't have weapons. I, I want to give. Oh, okay. I have an yeah, idea. I just want to give Talon uh, a, 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 a picture of what you're up against here. Yes. So just so you know, there are three armed people in here with weapons drawn. There's a lot of unarmed, sick people who can't move. Um, you're in close quarters, weapons fire might happen. I'm just throwing all the variables at you. So you can totally do what you're about to attempt. I just want you to know the risks that are involved. If she tries to... Neck pinch? Neck pinch, yeah. is the armor going to affect? Because yeah. if they're wearing armor, she their might not Their heads are exposed, which means their neck is exposed. Ooh. If you roll well enough, I'll let you do. I'll, I'll let you do it. But if wow. you're doing it on one of them, there's still the three. But How you're gonna close? have to be pretty precise. And now I'm thinking the Zachary are very strategic, so if I try to take out their leader, they might be like, eh, oh well. 
Is it worth it? Should I try it? This? I don't know. That is um, all that Talon no makes and we don't. Uh, Talon. Um, it's Aliza asking. <laughs> yeah, I know. But. Talon, I'll get. If you it, okay, I tell you what. Since since you're wondering, Talon's not sure if she, if she wants to take action or not. Well, my first instinct was to take action. Okay. Then but if you're going to give more information, I'm only going to get uh, the only time I'm ever going to give information is if you make a roll, um, or if you spend momentum. Otherwise, mm-hmm. I'm not going to volunteer information. Mm. <laughs> not anymore. Do your values tell get you anything in. in this moment? <laughs> oh, yes. good question. Does it like direct sort of who you would be in this well, scenario? Well, I mean, actually, uh, if you go to get one of them, wouldn't you think the other three would probably go at you? If it's the element of surprise, then... I can do my distraction dance. What Just you kidding. doing? <laughs> I, here's the thing. Here's what I'm thinking. Oh, this is tough because it seems so risky because we're not armed and they are. Um, if I, instead of just straight up nerve pinching the Zack Dorn leader, if I can close the gap, my distance to him, grab hold of him and threaten a nerve pinch, mm. then maybe that will give me some leverage. Because I it's think possible. if I just go in and Try to do, do a standoff. it, I've, pull, I've, already, yeah, I've already pulled off, pulled my, shown my hand kind of. So the variables there is you'd have to, you, you could get Close. to him. Yeah, okay. He's going to get an opportunity to try to draw a weapon. Mm-hmm. But you could get to him. Okay. It's conceivable that if you put him between you and the other three, you could, you could basically hold him hostage, yes. That's entirely yeah. possible. And my nerve pinch can kill him, right? Yes. Uh, no. No? Nerve pinch cannot kill. Mm-mm. You can, you knock his ass out, though. You can incapacitate him completely from this fight. Um, here's, here's something else, though. Um, because this is a split second decision and we're taking a long time to decide what you're going to do yeah. from here forth if you don't make a decision now I'm going to start get, awarding myself threat okay alright <laughs> ah! <laughs> also the captain's on the other side so couldn't they just point their weapons at the captain there's a lot of variables yeah, I've given you the variables like you could grab him but then you go, okay great well now we have your captain Look, it's so like, here's oh, Lucal I love Lucal he's a great dude but he is in between me and this room of people with guns so. oh, yes. mm-hmm. Lucal is frozen stiff right now um, so here's what we're going to do no. Um, so Talon, <laughs> Talon, you you see a possible opportunity. Oh, the beam out has just happened. The other three look completely stunned. No one thought that that was possible. The transporter had been disabled, Ooh. and the ionic interference made oh. it impossible for transporters to happen. And yet the Sally Ride okay. has just beamed out six of their crew members. The cat, the commander, okay. looks shocked, but he doesn't look like. It. Let me put it this way: he's not going to fall victim to a surprise round. He's ready. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I want to go for the commander. Do um, I don't know how to do this, but I. I What's my, your intention? My we'll intention is to incapacitate him and take his weapon. Okay, then we're going into combat. Yes. So this is what happens. Oh, okay. oh I the wish beam out happens. There. They I'm all so look scared. shocked as hell. The commander looks around. You see the commander immediately reaching down for both of his phasers, Mm-mm-mm. and all of you watch suddenly as Talon lunges forward. Um, it takes a few moments for the other three oh. to see what's happening, but their weapons come up as the Vulcan just clears the distance in one giant stride. You get to the commander, and we have to go on break. No! Because <laughs> it's 11 p.m. here, oh, and that's yes. our break time. I'm so oh, scared. Scared. I don't need a break. Oh, yeah. Cliffhanger at the, at the break. Commercial break. Yeah, mid episode. Yeah, that's yeah. a commercial oh. break cliffhanger. Dang. <laughs> so we're gonna cut to like our break. Um, stay tuned. We're gonna see what happens with Talon in this. And oh, I gotta we're about save to the rest of my crusoda. Our first done. combat in the new Star Trek oh, RPG, guys. No. Here we go. Uh, um, so we're gonna stay tuned. We'll be back in about ten minutes. Uh, Stick around. Uh, There's blood everywhere <laughs> as the Vulcan just rips them I'm all apart sorry, with his bare hands. hands. It was not just death. logical. Death. <laughs> <laughs> they were not logical. <laughs> I have the worst FOMO in the world. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Throw um. staring in horror. <laughs> it's like, dude, that's like cutting right back into like Event Horizon or something. Everyone's um. barfing because of how gross it was. <laughs> and Salon's like, they were not logical. <laughs> 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 it's insane. It's in the corner rocking. <laughs> <laughs> Oh horrifying. <laughs> None of this <laughs> everything. And Sorry. like that was the and dream Rue sequence. Was now yeah, we're back it's to just reality. like cut back to Rue, girl from <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Sorry, we we've, we've I've been drinking a lot of coffee tonight. <laughs> anyway. Now back to that super heavy cliffhanger. Oh, oh. Okay. Talon. Yes indeed. All, All right. right. So I it's been a while. It's been up. a while, but I do believe we still know how to do combat on this baby. So let's mm, uh, gonna find out. work this out. Now this is gonna kind of throw you guys at home that are used to playing RPGs. Um, in this game, 
there is no initiative roll. I was shocked to learn that. There's no initiative roll. It's set up so uh, essentially I, GM, decide who goes first based on what the situation is. Now at first I thought that was a little crazy because it kind of puts a little too much power in my hands. <laughs> but generally speaking, the way combat works, as we have learned, is that initiative in this game isn't as powerful as it is in other games. Um, for example, in melee combat in this game, if you decide to run up and try to attack someone with melee, as we're about to do, it's a contested roll. And if Talon were to fail and he were to succeed, he would immediately be able to attack Talon. So this almost comes off like a Rocky match. So sometimes initiative in this game doesn't really matter so much. So instead, what we do is a back and forth. So. I'm giving Talon the initiative on this, so Talon's gonna get to act first. Then it'll be me, because there's three, uh, there's four people in this room, so I'll get four. But y'all are gonna outnumber, so you're gonna get one more action than them, but it basically bounces back and forth mm -hmm. as we trade back and forth. The interesting thing about this initiative system, though, is that it works in both starship combat and uh, ground combat, the way it is now. It also means that as part of the initiative round, um, if Sam was, say, up in orbit in the middle of starship combat, you guys, that round, we could immediately cut to the bridge of the Sally Ride who's fending off an alien attacker uh, in orbit, and then cut right back to there. So even though it's an interesting and sort of unique initiative system, it actually seamlessly blends multiple dynamics of combat into one scene. It just takes a little getting used to. So that actually means I'm in initiative with everyone right now. That is correct. Because I know that, like, what there's something up. It means you are gonna get an action in this combat round, even Cruise. though you're on the bridge. I just and have. so does Jiv. So y'all technically outnumber them dramatically mm. <laughs> in this combat round. Now, it also means that I may be aware of some people that are involved in combat that you haven't, you're not aware of yet. Just the way that these guys in this room right now aren't aware that there's two people back on the bridge of the Sally Ride and an entire engineering team that just helped beam six people over. So everybody on the same page here? Yeah. All right, so oh, we're gonna go ahead and jump into like combat. I'm gonna fight. rule oh. that with the sudden beam out, you're able to seize on the moment's confusion and clear the distance, Talon, to reach him to make a melee attack against him. So you're in reach okay. range right now. Okay. So here we go. This, you're declaring a non-lethal attack, I believe? Because it's, now, real quick, you've got the talent, Vulcan Nerf Pinch. Mm -hmm. That is specifically non-lethal, isn't that correct? I thought it could could be lethal, but we would have to decide on that. I think it's. I, I think specifically it's non-lethal. Okay. Plus, you're also a Vulcan and a Starfleet officer. That's two things. Well, yeah, I, yeah. Going into the past, <laughs> being a pacifist on two different mm -hmm. occasions. Ethically, yes, but yes, I, I think I physically would not maybe no. I don't, to know. Kill him. I don't yeah. know. I I kind of feel like. Uh, the Vulcan, you, you kind of see like the way Leonard Nimoy described it when he was talking about the Vulcan nerf pinch was it actually wasn't just a nerf pinch to the nerf cluster in, in a species, it's actually part of the power of the, the Vulcan like mind. Oh, it's a mind, it's like an anti mind. That's the way like Leonard a, Nimoy originally yeah. envisioned it when he, huh. when he thought it up. That makes um, sense. So, in, in this case, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of in that gray area where I think it's a little of A, little of B. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, we'll have to explore that. Um, okay, I, I yeah. would not doubt in, at home, I'm sure there's people watching right now that know a canon moment where a nerf pinch has been used lethally. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not aware that it's ever been used lethally. I, as far as I know, it's, it's a pacifist way of incapacitating an opponent. Well, I definitely don't well, want to use it lethally right now, regardless. Good. I mean, Another thing I was going to tell you right before we make the roll. If at any point you go for lethal combat, I immediately gain one threat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not that y'all are going to, because you're Starfleet. But if you were forced to, you don't know to, me. That's true. Okay. You were just like pulls out a phaser gun. I'm great. I'm good. That <laughs> sage is an unknown. Hey, concept. talking about the Vulcan oh. nerf pinch. Was it Spock's brother in Star Trek V: The Final Frontier? Wasn't he like, uh, like a, like a, like a off kilter Vulcan and did whatever he wanted? Yeah, he was able to. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he did was he able to actually cause uh, emotional memory and hallucinations. I think. Okay. Uh, yeah. Telepathically, yeah. he was able he, to create. If he ever used that. But that's that. kind of weird. Yeah. yeah. Look. That's kind of weird because he was creating he was creating scenarios with Vulcan power that everyone could see. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah. Like the, everyone saw the interaction I don't between remember, Sarek and uh, yeah. you sure. don't remember you blocked it out. <laughs> I remember two scenes yeah. from that film. Let's, let's move <laughs> that. No, no, we're good. Am I being shot right now? Yes, I'm sorry. You were shot while we were having this conversation. I know. I'm sorry, Amy. Battery looking. Um, 
When right. we when we started this show, I said we're gonna have to be careful not to go into Trek yeah. talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry guys. You remember that part? I really want to know no, no. now. Yeah, I appreciate it, Thrillo. I appreciate it. He put it on so, that punk rock yeah, kid. He it, died, it, right? It, it will. It will. <laughs> I can hear the Monty Python cast screaming, "Get on with it!" it. <laughs> All right. So, go ahead and make a daring plus security task roll with a difficulty of one, opposed by the target's daring plus security. Doesn't Nerf Pinch have a special? Oh yeah, that's right. You use. Does it use like science or something? Yeah, you use science. Yes, it I feel like does. that's why you use it. Yeah, yes. like, that's right. You yeah. use science for your attack, which is one of the reasons why that is a dangerous attack. Don't. Um, can I use a momentum? Do you guys mind if I use a momentum no. for this? Please do. <laughs> please, please, please use, use momentum. momentum. Yep. Please. All right, please so use now it. I have three. Yep. Okay. And I'm right. Roll. What am I rolling? Science, science and something. And daring. Uh, whatever it says on your character sheet please there. Daring. Don't want to be daring. Go. I'm gonna um, spend oh. for nerve pinch. I don't yeah, I'm gonna that. spend a point okay, of threat to gain an extra die here. Ah. Oh, it's like two specific. Yeah, it's probably in the racial stats. Maybe uh, control. Is it control? It should say on your Wait, character yeah. sheet. Uh oh, I didn't. Under your talents. I didn't it's under your talents. It. Depends on the detail with what you. Have I didn't put all the out. details on my character. Yeah, yeah we didn't put all the oh, details. All right. No. She's looking it up right now. I'm looking it up. Yeah, yeah. Little blanks. Yeah. Are you looking it up? Who's looking it up? But can you look it up too? Because you might stand by. Yeah, whoever's faster. So we'll it's a going. race. While they're doing that, I'm gonna charge. I guess <laughs> <laughs> everyone's uh, distracted. Everyone's no one's gonna suspect me to attack. <laughs> I'm actually, Rumi, don't yeah. make my job harder. <laughs> I'm actually quite daring. Rumi immediately breaks our uh, uh, Sage immediately breaks out into the uh, distraction distracting dance. dance. <laughs> distraction dance. Distra oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Doctor and I are like um, Sage. The throw your voice. Uh, <laughs> throw your voice Captain. across the room. Can I Look, can I use science instead of, of medicine? I'm almost. Yeah. I'm, I'm 90 percent <laughs> sure that it's it's. Uh, Got it. It's reason plus science. What do we got? Um, no, it would still be control. Is it control because plus? it's a melee attack. <sighs> the only thing is that you do change the discipline. You can use science or medicine instead of security when attempting the attack, and may increase your damage by your science instead of your security when you're doing the damage. Ooh. Oh, cool. Ooh. Um, so other it'll than be that, daring it's and science. Daring and science. Um, a melee weapon with uh, one. Intense. So daring plus science, mm -hmm. and you and can then, use, you, and you'll be able to mm -hmm. use your science skill for the the damage. Okay. Cool. So go ahead and make your roll, and he's gonna make his roll. You have to beat a difficulty of one. <sighs> well, oh. two successes and one complication. Oh. Oh, Rolled a no. twenty. Not good. Not good. Oh. Do you have anything for rerolls? But two successes. Do you have anything two successes. for rerolls? Oh, any um, any uh, any talents? Uh, see here. Folk, uh, what's not so focused. you're gonna succeed, but you have to you have to beat him. Values, so hold on one right? sec. Isn't the values what I would get a reroll on? No. Um, no, it would be a talent. It would oh, be part talent. of your talents. Uh, yeah. I have technical. Oops. Like if you have something that lets you reroll all science rolls. Technical for, expertise. That would be great right now. Congratulations, you succeeded. Oh, yay! yay. There is gonna be a complication, but you are gonna succeed. Okay. I think this um, just died. So. Okay. No I using. am going to <laughs> okay. well, uh, just to keep this easy and keep it flowing. I'm going to just go ahead and reward myself one threat for the complication. Oh. <laughs> okay, that works. Um, and now, uh, since you succeeded, you basically Talon lunges behind. Uh, you're able to get as he's going for his phasers. You're able to jump forward, and he sees it coming. He looks like he tries to get a phaser up between the two of you, but you're able to like raise your arm and just sort of arc your arm over the top of his reach. So you kind of do this kind of maneuver, and using a reverse grip, you manage to jam your hand into the collar of his metal armor. You see his eyes go wide as he realizes exactly what's about to happen to him. So now we need to make a damage roll. <laughs> okay. Um, right. What's your science? If the attack what is successful, is five. then the attacker then inflicts damage as described for the damage. <laughs> okay. Six. It says read nice. somewhere else. <laughs> oh, okay. One for the melee weapon correct. itself, and then one for the discipline. Okay. So the damage and dice, that's correct. More. So Six a number dice, of damage right? dice. Mm -hmm. uh, well, here, can actually. Two. You need two, Sam, right? Can I borrow two of these? Yes. So sure. you have this, Sam? Yeah. So how many damage dice is it? Um, it's one for the nerve pinch itself. Right. Um, plus, the part of the talent is that you can increase damage by science discipline instead of security. So Her science is five, so five. that's an additional five, so a total of six damage dice. Total of six, six damage, damage dice. dice. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. So Ooh. go ahead and roll d6. Come on. Finally, um, get to roll some it damage. It has intense, so we'll see if there are effects rolled. I think, okay. Um, uh, uh, no, that's actually quite a good roll. Yeah, that's very good. good. We like it, we're happy. This is the only one that's landed. So, yeah, exactly. ones right. and twos explode, ones and twos counts for one point and Little two explosions. points. So you have, Fives okay. and six are one point, but they activate an effect. You have one effect. Mm. So you that's have an effect. six damage yeah. So yeah. this effect. one is an effect. Yes. yes. Six the effect damage on nerve effect. pinch is intense. Um, that may yet be Did pertinent. Just, we'll see in a moment. Did Talon okay. just kill him? 
<laughs> Six <laughs> damage and an effect? So here's oh, so that's seven hold, hold, hold up. Hold up. Oh, let me right. let me explain this to the audience. So basically the way yeah. it works now is we're doing damage with D6s. Seven. So on a D6 okay. for the damage dice, uh, ones and twos counts for one and two. Three and four, zeros. They mean nothing. Fives and six count as one, but they activate an effect. Effects could be something like wide angle, uh, wide angle, like like if you if you're firing a phaser, you could do a wide angle attack, mm -hmm. or you could do a penetrating attack. So you get through armor and stuff like that. It basically activates a special effect. Your special effect on the nerve pinch, uh, the effect I believe is intense, which you can now activate mm -hmm. um, if Ooh. you wanted to. Just now, what does intense do? Um, mm. It increases the cost to avoid an injury by one for each effect rolled. So. Oh, the right, cost because to avoid an injury will be up by one for one effect. And avoiding injury, I believe, is you can spend two threat or momentum to avoid getting the injury trait, um, I believe. Correct. Yes. The thing okay. that you get to do like once a scene, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that cost increases by one. Um, we can okay, also, cool. Yeah. Um, this attack ignores armor because she's going for a vulnerable spot, so we don't have to worry about resistance, right? Yeah, I'm already I'm already ruling that she basically got through mm -hmm. the yeah. neck plating mm -hmm. in, in his armor yeah. right. and got him. Okay. Seven um, so how much damage was it total? Seven. Woo. Seven? Woo. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, well, look at the twos. Mostly Those dead. twos are great. Yeah. <laughs> the effects are wonderful, Mostly but the twos dead. are great, you guys. Yeah. Man. I like twos. He's sleepy ah. now. Uh -huh. Uh, one moment. Give me one second. Yeah. While Talon is, is, by the way, well, we're not yet. Talon's very thrilled right now. Oh, I didn't know Whoa. Vulcans Whoa. could be thrilled. She would never oh, tell snap. anyone or something. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Okay, he has to, to he has that. to make a roll here, or he's, he's Oh, gonna, Talon's gonna have to do some He's gonna have to make a roll, or he's dropping like a ton of bricks. Yeah. <laughs> and he also, the whole way down. He also craps his pants, right? Yeah. There's Which also then affects the morale. Effect? Okay. <laughs> But it's in a suit, other. so it's in its, it's all suit, like, so also it's kind of like, oh, oh. So we don't know, we just hear a squish. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> and, <laughs> ooh. Ooh. Uh, the best day ever. This one's for comedic time, and not this plan, y'all. Yeah, we do. We gotta get out of here alive, but we it gotta, will be the best but day But this ever is fun, though. When we do. Okay, here's what happens. Um, the, you said it increases the, the m amount he has to, because it's intense, right? Right. So I have to spend three, I'm gonna spend three threat here, so he does not go down. Well, he doesn't what? black out. Oh. He does, however, drop to his knees in screaming agony. <laughs> um, this guy's tough. He, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, no, you, you messed him up. <sighs> he, okay. he, basically what happens is, um, as you arc down and get that hand underneath the, the neck plating and you squeeze it, you feel his body give out immediately. Mm -hmm. um, his eyes widen. It looks like he may have bolstered himself, realizing he was about to become a victim to a very legendary mm. Vulcan attack. Um, but what happens is, is as he's pulled that phaser out, you because he also rolled a complication, you see um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it cancel. So as okay. he pulls the phaser out, you see he kind of he doesn't let go of the phaser as he originally was going to. Uh, instead, his grip becomes tighter, but he doesn't fire. Okay. Um, instead, he goes and he drops like a ton of bricks right onto his knees and pitches forward and catches himself from blacking out, still conscious. Wow. But he, 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 let me put it this way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna increase his difficulty of doing any actions this round by one. Because he's just dropped to his knees and is now completely vulnerable. Um, you almost completely removed <laughs> His, his stress levels in that one attack. Mm -hmm. um, just so we know for decision, since I am in this combat, which is exciting, um, we get to take advantage of my quick to action talent. For this first round, we ignore the normal cost to keep the initiative. Um, yes, you can spend momentum to keep the initiative on your side. You can only do that once. But for this round, for we round. get to ignore that cost, and we can just do it for free at some point this round. Yeah, okay. so that basically. That for our keep the initiative, but it is free. So we real can use quick, that when we like, but it's out there. So real quick explanation again to the audience. As I said before, you can w the way combat works is we pass it back and forth. In this case, um, it would go back to me now that they've taken an action. But Commander Rue has, and normally what you can do is you can spend two momentum to keep the initiative on your side for one action, for one round, basically, for, for one action. And then when the round is over, you can do it again the next round but only once per round can you keep the initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, because Commander Rue's got a rad talent, 
it's not going to cost you any momentum. You can just do it. That is great. I'm, I, I'm really happy um, about telling you guys. So <laughs> as chaos is breaking out, this guy drops to the floor. Um, Dr. Thrillo, you see Dr. Bob's initial instinct the moment it looks like violence is breaking out. You see he immediately throws his body over the top of the patient that's laying Aww. on the table. Aww. He just immediately acts. I'm giving him a minor action. He's basically just going to throw himself over the top of that body. Okay. Um, Priority number one, save even that takes, man. He what? even takes care not to like, put fuck. weight on him. On he grabs the other side of the bed and just holds himself there, like arching himself up so he doesn't put any weight on the fragile body of this, per, of this patient. Um, Good for him. Um, what do you, Ru, you're basically going to keep the initiative here? Um, we have that option. I collectivize it, like you know. Decide now. If anybody, uh, you yes. 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 Right. yes. Who's yes. taking it? Yeah, let's very tenuous. Yeah. Who's taking it? Standing closest to the other armed people. Um, I would probably say, uh, oh, actually, sage. probably Sage. Yeah. Yeah. Me, probably. And since yeah. Sage is standing right next to one of them, uh, like Sage how is close? Kick some ass. How close? You're yeah. within reach. I am in, re in reach. Mm -hmm. Can I just <laughs> body? I mean, that's a, that's yes, the one can. move that I really just, know. Just well. to clarify, Thanks, we, we don't have any weapons on us no. on our suits. We don't have we our, our standard issue we phasers. Uh, uh, you did have phasers. They were taken from you, and now they've been beamed aboard the Sally Ride. Wait, say that again. Oh. I remember you two had your weapons taken. Now, now just They're so you know, ours were taken. the doctor, the doctor That's and right. you have weapons. Right. Oh. So I think maybe Rue and Talon yeah, weapons yeah, yeah. were confiscated, and they were Sage just beamed off into, gotcha. onto the into the. Uh, okay. All right. What are you doing, Rue? Gonna, uh, Sage. I'm, I'm. Everyone's so distracted, and sh and I saw her just like run to someone. I'm like, okay. So <laughs> uh, as as timid and and nervous as most people think I am, I'm actually extremely daring. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna just go Makes for sense. it. Woo! All right, you're making a melee attack. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Go ahead, and this is going to be a, I believe this is a daring security. Okay. So go ahead and make your daring security check. The difficulty, uh, difficulty is, one. is one. Okay. And it's a roll off against his mm, roll. Should I do a momentum, guys? I think okay. spending momentum in combat is yeah. a momentum. great way to spend um, momentum. And so, yeah, I'm just going to charge the closest guy. I'm just going to body slam him as hard <laughs> as I can, try and, I like, I don't know, knock weapons off. I, I'm just trying to yes. I'm just trying yes. to add to the chaos, basically. Okay, yes. okay cool. Okay. So, are you, so, you, so you, this is a non-lethal attack. You're basically just trying to punch him, uh, I'm, I'm body slamming him, trying to... to like an unarmed strike. Basically. Like an unarmed okay, strike. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and make your roll. Full body. Yeah. Difficulty is one. Tell me what you get. Oh boy. I ran past him and completely missed an oh, open wall. Wow. Um, I got a complication so and yeah. no successes. No successes? He's oh wait, do you. I have any? Oh, no. no. Oh wait, wait, wait. No. Ventr ventriloquism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Cream soda. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, no. No. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. God. Sage is a great even has something to do. I tried so hard to make you proud, Commander Rue. Didn't work. Um, Next time, wait. Turn right. him around, little bird. Okay, well. That's one. Precise evasion? Uh, can nope. I, can I nope. fly around this? Nope. <laughs> oh. <some> nope. <laughs> untapped potential, but I can't use that unless so. I succeed at a task. <laughs> <laughs> do you have like, determination that would be relevant here? So um. Well, you have to succeed Valiant. before uh, you use your potential. Screen. That's just messed up. Clear it afterwards. There's yeah. like a reroll thing. Yeah. One of the uses of oh, the yeah, would be is to reroll all the things. I'll allow um, it. Yeah. <laughs> so my values are trust is earned, not given. There's really not a lot. Family. You, uh, I'm gonna stop you there. There's really not a lot you can do for this field combat. You done fail. <laughs> all right. Well, guys, I might die. It's um, been a great honor. So make your call right you. now because I'm about to roll damage. So uh, uh, are you great. are you spending anything to reroll dice or anything like that? I can't. I, can I? Oh, can I reroll with momentum? Oh. Yes. Hi guys, I'm gonna do that. Uh, one momentum, two momentum. It's one momentum, I believe. Isn't that right, Sam? Just roll mm. one, reroll one I dice, don't or how many remember dice? I use my Sorry, guys. That included rerolls. Hang in there. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I don't. Think uh, come use the momentum. No, we're getting. I think you no. rerolled damage. I don't think you actually get. To You're right. It's damage. Attack. Sorry. Yeah. Put that momentum oh. back. We're back at two. You just got hit, Sage. Shoot. Um, You're gonna get hit. We, Doc, mm. be, be on standby. <laughs> I'm gonna need you. What's your stress? What, what's your hit points? Your stress level? I'm like. I'm like the worst one. I'm nine. Nine? You take five points of damage. Oh, gosh. As you get clubbed with the butt of his phaser rifle. Oh, that sounds um, bad. You, you come up and you try to you try to seize on the confusion, but he 
To his credit, this Sector military officer recovers pretty fast, and as he sees this Bajoran charging up to him, he immediately recoils, and as you take a swing, he actually sort of slides a little bit to the left and brings the butt of that phaser rifle up into your chin, <sighs> knocking you back. Now, that's mm -hmm. gonna be more than half of your stress. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna be, you're gonna have to avoid injury on this, or Usually you're gonna we take- have some okay. level of natural resistance plus armor to that's act as gonna, other resistance. Oh, I have oh you know what, you've got a helmet on. Suit. And I have a helmet yeah. on, and my So and then you're gonna take, okay, so you're not gonna take an injury here. Otherwise you would take an injury, but oh. it's gonna be less than half. Oh. All right, so it's gonna be like, what, five? So you, or yeah, six? no, no, originally it was gonna no, be- No, soak. Oh, right. Yeah, like, yeah. you get, it was five damage, right? You're gonna reduce it by one. So, so you take four, four, four points so of damage. Now I'm at five. One resistance. Um, because so uh, yes. you, all y'all have one resistance. So I'm feel, very daring. I'm just not very good at the fighting thing. Guys. So you feel a concussive That's hit against have. your helmet as the butt of the rifle comes up. You feel the impact against the the plexi, sort of like the glass uh, mm -hmm. that separates you between the the outside world. Thank God. And you are stum you stumble back into the center of combat. Okay. Uh, you're still within reach, so it's not gonna you're not gonna be penalized for that. Okay. But um, what you hear is what you see because you rolled a complication. Of course I did. Um, so you see the crack in the and the helmet immediately, and you hear beep 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 going off, an indication environmental alert going off, oh. and you immediately are being warned. Warning: radiation levels detected. Oh. As you go stumbling back. Great. Um, <laughs> I feel so responsible. <laughs> and Frollo for all of is this. very angry. You are. Uh, it's your well. Fault. Um, so that's there. Now it's going to bounce to their round. Is that how he sees it? From now on, I'll just stick to fly. All right, let's keep it moving. So we're Daring going to the their helmet. round of combat. Yes. Um, we do not get to keep an issue. Their place. round of combat, you see one of the Zach Dorn in the back as a minor action. I'm going to spend threat to get two minor actions here. And one of them immediately starts entering what looks like, just from the sound of it, he pulls up his combat suit and begins to tap in a bunch of buttons immediately. And you can all hear this um, A few seconds later, cut to the Sally ride, you see um, I'm Jiv, who has just finished beaming them into the brig, goes, uh, Commander? And then the ship immediately goes to red alert. As all of a sudden, he says, we have borders, sir. And outside the brig, you watch as uh, three more Zakdorn, not the ones in the room with you, but three more Zakdorn beam in, and a firefight begins between them and one of the ensigns that's in the uh, holding cell. Oh, oh hell no. <laughs> Y'all, I think this is my initiative now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it, it will be, yes it is, yeah. Uh, no, because I'm oh. going to spend two threat to keep the initiative. All right, all right. spend I, it I, down. I, Go I, ahead. I, 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 I. Um, and the mm, the commander, he is going to guard. <laughs> On this particular ship, commander is an incredibly non-specific term. We have like twenty. The commander, the the yeah. Zachdorn Zach Zach commander, the one okay, that's on cool. the ground. That dude. Yes. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Zachdorn commander. Um, he like, is going she's to. A she's oh. a commander. Oh. I'm a commander. <laughs> okay. Okay. Someday. Um, he, <laughs> on his action, you see he basically, as you as you have dropped into the ground, Talon, he, your instinct, I, I would say to Martinez is watching this happen, it's clear he has combat experience. Because instead of getting aggressive and trying to engage Talon, he actually does a very smart move and disengages. You see he mm -hmm. pulls, he lets, he pulls up his arms into like a, a like a tuck, and he rolls back away, removing himself from reach yep. from Talon. Yikes. And begins to stumble backwards towards some of the patients that are lining the wall. And he has his phasers out. Now he's not gonna get an attack this round because he basically just used his action to sort of get away. And his task was he's putting on guard. I made a roll for him, so the difficulty to hit him has gone up by two. All right. So he has difficulty three to hit him All if right. anyone's gonna he try to attack him. He said he pulled him. his phasers as well. His phasers are out, yeah. His minor action was to okay. pull up his phasers. Oh boy. The combat round now goes back to you guys. Um, sure does. Now whoever you want can go next on your side. I All wanna right. take this one because I want to, again, to sort of establish the spatial relations. Okay. The room, the medical room, with all these patients, everything going down. I feel like it was Lucal. We rounded the corner, Lucal and I. He was in between mm -hmm. uh, Cap Captain Martinez seeing into the room, and I'm wearing the suit. What yep. I want to be doing is running into the room, and as I'm doing it, because I have a phaser, so does the doctor, I want to run in there and try to hail the Sally Ride one, one more time, 
to basically say, Commander, I need you to do that again, please. And then I'm running in, drawing a phaser, and trying to get a shot. If 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 the leader, if the Zactron leader is harder to hit, if he rolled as this thing is happening, I will aim for him. But it's really, it's because of how far away I was, whatever I can see, whatever I can hit. But that's as I'm running in, I want to be able you can do to that. do that. Which one? You you can do all of this, but it's going to cost momentum because it's that's a handful of minor actions. Sure. So it'll cost... Or your task could be an assist, the thing that gives me the extra task. Your True. commanding officer thing, so that I yeah. can do that. that it, rather so than you my whole the task the can be... Action. Here's what I can tell you, though. Assist, yeah. Here's the thing, though. Yeah. Um, so what you can do, for sure, is where you're at, where you're positioned right now in the doorway, um, it's, it's not even... It's nothing to open fire on the uh, commander who's on the other end of the room. It's a little bit of risk involved because Talon is very close to the to mm -hmm. that to the firing spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You'd basically be shooting right past her. Oh yeah. Um, your minor action would essentially be uh, your minor action would be pulling a phaser and the action would be firing. If you're going to contact mm -hmm. the Sally Ride and give an order, that's also an action. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to pick between shooting or contacting the ride and getting I feel commander. like transporting six of these armed guards was incredibly successful, so I'm gonna take this action to do that, but I wanna do it in a loud enough way that maybe I'm announcing myself even to maybe be a bit of a distraction to try to help to take off some of the heat from I see what you're saying. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, I just want to be like, Commander, do that again in the room so that everyone's like, uh. <laughs> Okay, then, cool. You're not doing a secure channel. You want everyone to know what you're doing. Yes. Okay, cool. I want everybody on this planet to know what's happening. Okay. That's right. Um, all right, so you're going to, so then that's going to be a command action. Command action, right. Cool. Command assist. That will give Rue immediately an action here. Or all if right. you want to give to Jiv, whoever you think. Uh, Jiv is the one yeah, that's actually it, making the roll. If it goes yeah. to Jiv, because I have to deal with borders right now. But you can I, say, I Commander, do that again, and Jiv right can take now. the action. Okay, great. Because that's I'll the say, cinematic. Sally Ride, do that again, please. All right, so Jiv is going to take the action. Yeah. Um, you <laughs> basically enter the room with your phaser drawn. Yes. So we'll say the, so I'm going to say you step into the room with a phaser drawn. That is very visible at this point. Mm -hmm. You were armed. Um, you give the, the order as you pull that thing out. Uh, uh, as all of this is happening, I'm gonna make the roll here right now. Uh, Throlo, this whole room just became incredibly dangerous for every patient. Mm -hmm. um, you also, uh, Doctor, you also see that on the ground is Ensign Sage looking at a crack in her helmet and you seeing the alarms. Now, I'm okay, I'll, I'll I'm cool. I'll tell you right now, the radiation exposure level is probably gonna be easy to deal with. Um, but she's probably going to need some looking at. I'll be fine. At some, at some this point. is more important. I'm good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Need to get back to this alley right. I can take a little radiation. No big deal. No big deal. All right. So we're going to go ahead and make this roll for Jiv. All right. What's Sally roll on um, this? Okay. I think, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think Jiv would spend momentum on this again, also in an effort to try to generate more momentum because you guys are down to two. Yeah. Yes. Is we he rolling are. into a focus or anything he, that will make this roll easier? Engineer at heart. Engineer at heart. Oh, the difficult thing, better. yeah. Oh, oh wait, that's no, that's all determination. That. He already used that. He's already used it. Oh. Can no. I use question? Does he have question? a focus that's oh. relevant? No, he does not have a focus. Can okay. I use any kind of, because one of my talents is follow my lead. Uh, but oh. I didn't write down what the description of that was <laughs> because I am a fool. Some sort of an inspirational to get Jiv to, to do, can I do any sort of alley-oop assist? Roll or anything like that. Oh, have to look Hold, it up. please. <laughs> Hold, please. <laughs> the XO is referring Hold for look to. Up. Hold for lookup. Hold so for lookup. I, yeah. This is our homework for next episode. Yeah. Write if, all of the talents. Uh, if I've, if I've <laughs> got any, incredibly important. Yes. <laughs> if I've got any, it would be as for, as far as talents goes, it would be follow my lead. Or and the focus is I've got uh, composure, maybe. I don't know if I could argue. We'll see what that. the talent does. This is um, no. This is only if you succeed at a task during combat. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, no. Because you did not attempt a task. Wasn't there one though that the captain could? Oh no, no, no. I'm thinking of. Um, sorry, hang on. There was uh, uh, a way that I could. Uh, as a combat action. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yes. as a You're combat action. You're thinking the assist combat action. Yes. You opted for the command combat action. Correct. Instead. Yeah. Oh, so I So it's see. not going to apply here. Yeah. So oh. this is it's all on yeah. Jiv at this, this point. Is, this is Jiv. Okay, cool. All right. All right. So Jiv, up to you. So Jiv is going to go ahead and spend one point of momentum. Okay. All right, Jiv. Better get that back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't screw this up, Jiv. Yeah. I guarantee you Jiv right now is also sitting there at the con at the con console going, "Don't screw this up, Jiv." <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't. I'm focused on other things, so. Uh He is very good at what he does, though. Yeah. Good. I'm glad to hear. 
Me too. Mm. Okay, here we go. Three. Yep. Do I roll for her? Uh, yes, please. All right, what do I roll? Nice. Good. Um, Good this is going to be uh, another sensors, sensors and con, I believe. Two successes from Sally. Two Woo. successes from Sally. Yeah, and sensors means we're down a uh, difficulty level. So. Okay, so how many successes total for you? That was two from me. Two. And sensor, you said it was sensors, which means that the DC went down. Uh, correct. So the DC is going to drop to two. Okay. okay. Cool. So that I'm was sorry, two I should have given you the difficulty class. So yeah, two. Yeah, you didn't give me the DC. So guess what? You just gained four momentum. Whoa! Because Shiv rolled like a mofo. Thank you, Shiv. We love you. Uh, She's a good girl. You are. Shiv has rolled every roll I've gotten on Shiv tonight has been a crit. I've had one. Crit. <laughs> Do you want to roll oh, me? Oh, did I mess that up? Oh, did I screw that up? I'm sorry. Oh, that was good. Um, this is the problem with letting the GM run a PC because the GMs are trying to murder you. He just juiced us on purpose. All right. Uh, Y'all saw it. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. I gotta get that back because I won that. Okay. Um, so, let's see, there's three people left. <laughs> yes. Um, Wait, So three. Jim's action there's is four, four people. Zach Dorn. There's four. The commander four is and then the three. Oh, right. Yep. Okay. Um, so this is what happens. Um, that commander at the end of the hall pulls up his phasers, and it looks like he's about to shout something as he points both phasers at patients to his Ugh. left and his right. I don't like this guy. And his military officers are turning on one of them to the, the one that just struck uh, Ensign Sage. He stands over you and readies his rifle. Oh, um, crap. And okay. as all of this is happening, um, the, the Zach Dorn next to you, Dr. Thorlow, just goes, no, no! And then you hear, and once again, the blue glow as everyone in the room oh, boy. beams out. How, everyone okay. who, how many who? And, uh, every, the remaining Zach Dorn are gone. Okay. They all got beamed. I have a question. And they're, they're, because of the success with no complication, their weapons are disarmed the moment they beam into the yeah, brig. Like, beautiful. Uh, so oh, that completes, this. what's your question? Never, I don't know. I don't want to say it because then I might screw all this up. So okay. I won't. So they beam we'll into the brig. Everything's great. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're only left with. Now you're only left with. My three boarders. Mm -hmm. 13. No, yeah, 13. Zach Dorn in what? the brig right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All oh, right. Because oh, they're not have boarders then? Huh? 10 and then three boarders. Yeah. 10 in the room and then three. People and there's three outside. Yeah. So a total of 13 Zach Dorn are on board the Sally ride said? right I now. Six. Oh, right, right. Yep, six, yep, yeah. six yeah. plus 13 Zach Dorn. And then the yes. three borders, yes. Okay. Where are the three borders? The three borders on the other side of the force field, and they have taken down the ensign that was uh, guarding the uh, the brig Ugh. on the inside. Taken down how? Killed him? You're not sure. There's no way of knowing. But weapon discharge well, we can has been. find out with uh, sight to sight. Weapon discharge has been detected inside, okay. inside the. Uh, Inside the Sally right. I would really like to side to side to the brig. You want to get down to the brig? <laughs> okay. Dude! <laughs> uh, Dude! I, you, I, I don't think it's unreasonable to ask if the XO is asking, please beam me into the middle of three armed attackers. <laughs> but Jiv looks at you and goes, Commander, uh, you can't be. All right. Name me someone better on this ship to protect it. <laughs> All right. Let's go. You give me the order, I go. Do I need to repeat myself? Come on. Shiv gets over to the console and says, good luck, and activates the transporter console. <laughs> yep. um, what? I'm just gonna fall. I'm just picturing like, <laughs> I'm just trying to picture this scene. This is so like superhero. Like I'm picturing these three Zach Dorn standing in front of the force field, deact like going through the security codes to deactivate it. They're currently focused on getting the security, uh, the force field down. And as they're getting through, easily getting through the security parameters, behind them is a blue glow and a single trill on their crutches beams in behind them with a look in their eye. No phaser drawn, I'm guessing. Okay. Oh, um, no. You beam I in. To, I have to pause the game. I have to be the first person in this game to say this. These villains will rue the day they mess with us. Oh, no. And unpause, because I would do that if I were watching this. I would do that. Okay. Um, so rue, you beam in alone, oh, and the three armed attackers slowly oh, turn and good. look at you. Right. Um, we're gonna stop right there and cut to. 
Dr. Thrillo. Oh, okay. um, oh, I'm so as, ready for this. As all of this has <laughs> happened, the, the Zach Dorn leans up and just goes, oh God, oh no. And then you hear beep, 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 the alert going off, and you see the patient is going into uh, cardiac arrest. Get me out of here, are our transporters up? I'm, oh, I'm in the room now, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. in the room. Uh, yeah. The, yeah, you guys are out of combat, so you can talk right, to shit and right. all that good stuff. You've entered it, so essentially, let me let me paint this for you, Dr. Thurlow. Everyone is in combat now, including you. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. your enemy is this patient's dying heart. Mm. If you try to beam on board the Sally Ride into the sick, into sick bay, you could lose critical seconds at this point. So um, I'm gonna give you a round here, and I'm gonna need you to make your medicine checks okay. to try to get this. Now, this is gonna be really difficult because you don't have the, you don't have the stimulate the, the cor- what are they called, the cortical panels that they mm-hmm. use, uh, the, the cortical stimulators yeah. and the panel, and all the, all the devices Cortisine. they use to basically resuscitate somebody, you don't have those on hand. You only have your hypo sprays and basic 24th century CPR training here. Oh, y'all. Work with horse, like, let's go. And your right. two hands. Um, you see the Zach Dorn, uh, Dr. Bob just goes, I, I, uh, I, I, I don't know if I have the right hypospray for this. I, I don't know. You can see, as trained as he is as a doctor, clearly the combat, everything that's happened, mm-hmm. possible his own exposure to radiation sickness, he looks like he's cracking. He just says, uh, maybe I should assist. Hand me that. Grabs a uh, hypospray and hands it to you. Let's go. Um, so go ahead and make your medicine check here. Okay, I have a talent called first response. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah. It allows me, I think, I should have written down the exact wording. Um, I, I hope it applies here. It'll, I believe it allows me to always succeed at uh, like preventing injury, but with a complication. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Uh, can you confirm the wording at all? It's a medical talent. Hold, please. Thank you. <laughs> I should have written down the full description. That's okay. I'm worried it might be yes. combat specific. So let everybody know. Uh, and and this, is, this is not a dig at my players, but anybody anybody who is moving forward and wants to play this game themselves, What's the name? if you just write down the name First of the talents, response. that's kind of just like writing down the names of spells and not knowing what they do. Yeah. Because in this game, mm-hmm. talents are basically spells. Yeah. Think of them like that. They're basically enhancements to your character that let you do crazy cool stuff. Oh yeah, this is super dope talent. Is it specific to combat, or can I use it now? Am I still in combat? When you attempt the treatment task during combat, you gain a bonus d20. Further, you may always succeed at a cost, with each complication you suffer adding plus one to the difficulty of healing the patient's injury subsequently. So, let me explain that. That doesn't mean you immediately gain a complication. Mm -hmm. Um, It means if you fail, no matter how you failed, you immediately gain a complication, and it adds to any further complications you roll. I'm not convinced that that makes sense to me. If I fail, I can succeed, but I automatically... Let me me put it this way. Success at cost is a system used in this game. It means no matter what you do, you're gonna succeed. But no matter what you roll, if it's a failure, see normally you have to roll like a 20 to get a complication. Mm-hmm. In this case, if you roll, if you fail, you're gonna get a complication. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, and that'll add to any other complications you roll. <clears throat> so you're gonna succeed no matter what. You're and gonna save this patient's life. And it will make it harder to fix life. in future, but. But it could complicate something. So go ahead and make your roll. You will succeed at cost. May I spend a momentum? Yes. Mm-hmm. Save them. <laughs> Adding on that mm-hmm. die. Mm-hmm. And uh, the use of the first response gives me a bonus d20, right? I believe that's what it said. If it's in combat, it's we're, we're in combat. We're I'm giving it to yeah. you. I, okay, this is right, your you. combat Thank round, you. essentially, mm-hmm. Amy. Yeah, he said you were fighting the heart. <laughs> Dr. Thrillo is basically fighting death right now. Yeah. Which is what you do every time. Wow. So go ahead and make your roll, and this doctor is going to assist you. Ba- Bob is going to do everything he can to assist you. What is my... Uh, the difficulty here? Is gonna be four. Okay. We got this. What 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 attribute comes into play? So is it this, reason medicine or is it something else? This is gonna be. I believe this is going to be. I'll let you pick between insight and reason. Reason. Reason right. it is. <laughs> reason and medicine. Reason and medicine, and your focus will apply here. Excellent. Emergency medicine. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they're gonna make their roll. I am just rolling the crits tonight. Ooh! One, Could you not? Two, three, four, five, six, 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 six,
Whoa. Eight sixes. This is Whoa. the kind of like GM We're maxed out. <laughs> yeah. That I like that. <laughs> okay. That's good. That's good. Um, good. Uh, bonus momentum. You all max out of momentum. momentum. Yeah, a lot of momentum. Um, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Sorlo, you immediately go to work. Um, oh. oh. Because you're so familiar with the symptoms, you know exactly why the uh, the cardio, the, the whole system is failing right now. Um, as the pulmonary system begins to shut down, you're able to use a hypo spray, and you all watch um, as everything has happened just m instantaneously in this room, as the combat's broken out, as the beaming has happened, as phasers were getting drawn, as a neck pinch happened. Moments later, you watch as Dr. Throlo, you just see her coat just fly like, like a cape as she jumps up and mounts on top of the medicine bed on top of the patient and beats on his chest. On, this, uh, on her chest as you insert the hypo spray and just clubs the chest with a fist and you immediately get a heartbeat. Wow. In combination. Oh, so Bam. Cool. Um, I love everything about that. You <laughs> see now the, the rest of the organs suffer stress from this, but you didn't get a complication. So no other immediate medical effects jump into place. You just saved somebody's life by punching them. Wow. <laughs> really yes, hard. Um, the Zach Dorn shudders for a second and you hear, <gasps> And, That's right. <laughs> and the, and Bob looks at you and goes, I've never seen anything like that in my life. Let's keep going, more to do. More to do, more to do. And he grabs the rest of the hypo sprays. We um, need to get them off the ship. We need to get you Let's off get the ship. Off I'm this. okay. Um, I'm picturing a cut scene here, and I, I don't know why, but I keep thinking, this is like watching, this oh, is like suddenly to smash cutting to River Song, killing Reavers. Yeah. <laughs> That's Damn, kind of. Song. Oh, sorry, not River Song. <laughs> Too much Doctor Who. Doctor Who. I'm, well, I'm coming out of Doctor Who, uh, River Tam, reason killing Reavers. Reason why in play I always call things like Janelle Ruby beats up everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. River Tam um, beats up everyone. So, um, right. okay. It's going to be there. No, because Jib's action was beaming. No, no, Jib's action was that. Okay, I'm gonna rule. Oh. I'm gonna rule. I'm gonna rule that it's a new round because their action was beaming in. So we lose. Is it a new scene? You mean? Like, yeah. Okay. No, no. It's a new round, not a new scene. Yeah. New round of combat. New combat round. Oh. So they beamed in, mm -hmm. and they used their they actions their to. Yeah. They used their actions to take down the ensign, mm -hmm. and they used the last action to try to break down the security field. Oh, okay. And Rue, you used your action to be <laughs> to, to beam in behind these guys. We need popcorn. Um, yeah. So it's a new round. It's your action. Who goes first? Why do I ask? Who would like to go first? Oh, uh, is that Commander Rue? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Commander. <laughs> All right. Um, you beam in, I'm gonna say you're at short range, so minor action, you're within reach of all three of them. I'm already within reach without a minor action? Or no, I no, with the minor, minor action, you'll be within reach of all three of them. You can burn a point of momentum, you've got plenty yes, of I'm, it. Yes, I'm aware, <laughs> but when I cannot, that's ideal, so. Yeah, it's true. Um, but judging from my experiences of seeing Rue in combat. I might need to keep it, I don't want this it's true. to be the hey, day that it's we. It's true, but yeah. you beamed into short range, you did not beam into reach. Yeah, all right, um, um, but all right. good news. Once I'm in reach, they only have their phasers up. They're gonna have a sad, sad day. Okay. So yes, I do burn that one momentum for an additional minor action. So as I close all up into their business, okay. <laughs> um, I can use an additional minor action to aim. Yes. Which will let you re-roll one d20, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Um, I burn an additional momentum. Down to four. For one on the attack. Okay. All right. Let's dance. All right. <laughs> um, they're rather surprised to see uh, Rue clear yeah. the distance. You basically put one of those crutches forward and propel yourself yeah. with the rear. You launch yourself, clearing about eight feet in one go, just propelling yourself forward, landing down on that right crutch and bringing the other one up. Go ahead and make your roll. He's going to make his. Yeah. And I have, that's nice, and I have a re-roll. Oops. Oh, no, no. I got this. I got this. What was the difficulty? Uh, the difficulty is always one on, on combat. Oh, right. yeah. oh, wow. Difficulty is one, and then it's a contested roll against mm -hmm. their roll. Uh, they did good. <laughs> Put it that way. Okay, okay. So it's daring, whatever is daring plus security. And uh, so wh how many successes? Four. <laughs> Four, okay. Uh -huh. so you beat them. Okay. Um, yes. So uh, you're going to hit. Savagely. Yes. So you we get more momentum yes. back, right? Um, yeah, yeah, we get all of that momentum back. Yes, and, and, correct. Wow. And 
One more to go. Yes, and right. one more bonus that is going to be used to give them a sad, sad day. <laughs> All right, let's see it. All right, damage time, let's damage go. Damage time. Yeah. How many are you rolling for damage? Oh my um, goodness. Um, let's see. Five? Oh, crap, six? Hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Whoa. Um, so let's see. Yeah, two. Ooh. Five, oh. Six. Oh, that's pretty. Um, six and a knockdown on okay. the first one. Whoa. Six and a knockdown? Yes. All right. Yeah. Um, do you have intense or anything like that or vicious? That's vicious. That's already baked into oh. the number that I'm giving you. Okay. Um, so how much? Six, you said? Mm-hmm. He is going to soak one of that, but he is still going to suffer an injury. All right. He so he's out. Um, you clear that. They don't really have any way of processing what they're seeing as you beam in. <laughs> you leap over with the crutch, launching yourself as previously described. You don't club across the face, Rue. You use the end to basically deliver an uppercut of four feet of this steel going straight up into the lower part of his jaw. The Zakdorn goes hurtling back into the force field. You see it go as he pitches forward and goes straight down to the ground, unconscious. His phaser rifle just clatters off to the side. Are you keeping initiative? Um, I must protect and shepherd my ship and its crew. Mm -hmm. I would like to spend my point of de a determination for an additional task. Oh, you're gonna burn it, okay. Yeah. You this get an additional task. It's gonna be at plus one difficulty. Um, not for the determination, I believe. It, it That's is. a different mechanic than the momentum spend for the swift. For momentum spend? I think spend? you're thinking of the swift task, which it's costs possible. two momentum and does increase the difficulty by one. You might be right. You might be right about that. Yeah, that is the swift task. Hold, please. Hold, please. <laughs> it's a new system. It's a new system. I gotta say though, because um, that's like the advantage of doing the and they have radiation yeah. poisoning, but I can um, still dance. <laughs> mm -hmm. We can dance if we want to. Oh. We can leave like, all keep dancing. Just don't um, you know, yeah, oh, here we go. Medically indicated. Complications. It'll stimulate the correct task. pathways. Um, for now, I'm just gonna say yeah. Cool. And uh, we'll double check yeah, that rule later, but for the, at this point, ha! and I get it back. Um, so, I have my last talent, um, veteran. If I spend determination, roll 1d6. If a five or six regain determination, yes. I roll an effect. Yes. All right, so uh, he rolls a complication. On what? <laughs> on on his, because you were attacking him, so he's. I hadn't attacked him yet. Oh, what are you rolling? I was rolling to see if I regained the point of determination for my veteran talent. I get to do that. Oh, okay. Well, so I did, I got Either that. way, he's rolling because you're attacking okay. him. Yeah, okay, so, so he's, he can have a he's, sad day and he's, I will. He's rolled a complication on right, his difficulty cool. one roll. Um, I'm going to aim for the reroll. I'm going to spend a momentum for d20. All right, do you're it. You're gonna hear me do that a lot. Five. Let's see. Um, yeah, and that was three successes for me. Okay, you're, you're um, gonna slam seven. into him. Back. Make your back damage up. roll. Yep. Back up to six. Oh boy. Yep. Here comes oh. the damage. Oh no. We'll hey, damage. just improvise. <laughs> oh no! Oh. That'll do. Ooh. That'll do. That'll Don't do. Gink. That'll do. Radiation poisoning. I see some twos. I like twos. <laughs> How many fingers am I holding? Seven. Oh, good. Great. You're fine. Eight, and I knock that one down as well. He's uh, reduced to seven. That's more than half his stress. He also gets <laughs> pummeled. Um, that uppercut, um, as it sails up, with that 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 crutch, as it sails up, you use your your tipping momentum as your body's leaning to the left. You just kind of lean into it, and you're actually able to recover. So as this thing goes up, the right crutch goes down and catches it, and as you kind of support yourself off to the side, he kind of tries to get he tries to capitalize on what he thinks is a bad move on your part, hmm. but instead. That other crutch comes down just on top of his head, and you swing it with such a force that it doesn't bonk him on the head, it literally clears him. So it knocks his head straight to the left. Oh, it, no. Just a little bit stronger, and you might have heard a crack, but it breaks right across his face as you come into a position where you catch your weight, and he goes spinning as that phaser rifle clatters to the floor. The complication rolling, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna rule with that complication. Um, his phaser rifle goes off as he squeezes it. Mm. Yep. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yep. Uh, I want to do the third guy. I want to do 
<laughs> well, then I don't get to hit the third guy, so I'm uh, Okay. Um, okay, well, his partner just took 10 points of stress damage after being, which is almost enough to drop him to zero. Um, but the phaser rifle goes off. Rue, clearly from the damage he just took, it was not set to stun. Um, he goes spinning out, and you see the phaser rifle activate. His friend takes the shot to his side. It doesn't look like it's... It looks like he's going to re- need critical care immediately. <laughs> but you see the Zakdorn scream as he drops down. The Zakdorn within the... Uh, within the confines of the brig are watching this stunt. (laughs) This whole exchange has happened in a time span of about two to three seconds. As Rue clears the room, (laughs) Um, the guy hits the ground and the phaser rifle clatters off to the side. And you're standing there holding yourself with the crutch up to your face in the guarding position as you have trained yourself. And uh, leaning, all putting your weight on that right hand and the Zakdorn behind the force field are just staring at you. Like, <laughs> their mouths are hanging open. You really did call the wrong science vessel. Um, are we gonna watch the security footage and then later? Uh, you hear Ziv go, yes. yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna beam in another one if you don't put your weapons down. <laughs> and you see the, the Zakdorn inside, they just kind of look at each other and start putting their weapons <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> one by one as they're staring at Rue on the other side of the force field. Um, Shift beam those out. <coughs> oh, yeah. And uh, beam this one to the force field quarantine in sec bay. Uh, copy that, Commander. Um, we'll See? cut back to the room you guys are in. See, that's what Sage um, was trying to do in the last <laughs> uh, combat. Uh, <laughs> the room is, uh, Lucal steps into the room and is looking around, I'm just going, they're gonna send more. They're, they're gonna send. They're gonna send a lot more. Probably, Lucal. Hopefully, we're all gonna end up on the same ship within half an hour, so that we can leave. <laughs> I've got a procedural question about the world of Trek. How do how does somebody signify which bodies they want beamed if there's a finite amount of bodies they can be transported out? Does that make sense? It's like lock onto our signal because we have it, it was, signals. Yeah. But, I can help too. Yeah. It, it would be usually proximity. Proximity. So it's like okay. The three combat is plus whatever you know. So here's you. so here's my question. Exactly. This can be in game or out of game, but I wanted to ask the doctor. Obviously, the patient that you just brought back to life is priority number one and needs to be transported out of here as soon as possible. But if we are, and I'm kind of asking. Jiv, this same thing, Lieutenant Commander Jiv. If you can come in, um, if we are limited at six. Six people that we can transport max right now. I want Dr. Shishiros. I want Ensign Sage. I want Dr. Bav. I want patient number one. And then I've got two spots. And I want to kick it over to the doctor. So do you select the most critical patient? I have yes, a second the patient top, in critical the, condition. Mm-hmm. You have a second patient, there correct? Two. So we can transport up to three patients, including the two that are in critical condition if there's a maximum six, so I wanted to know if they're across the room, if it's not necessarily proximity, but like, you know, the ones that are in beds and can't move, ignore Talon and I signal for the moment. Beam out those guys. Yes, them two, Bob, patient number one, patient number two. Send Dr. Bob with the the most critical. I'll wait till the last ones are going. Okay. Okay, okay, so that means we can bring four patients. All right, so Jiv, you, you hear Jiv on comms go, Oh, I missed this. <laughs> and here's some buttons being pressed. Um, a few Did seconds. I hear that command? Because that was directed at Shiv. What's that? Yeah, I think this was all oh, happening right. in the two so, or yeah. three mm-hmm. seconds that you were okay, cool. knocking people Got down. It. I'm assuming, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, here's cool. what happens next, though. As this is, as he gets the order, <laughs> yeah. um, a few moments later, you see a pile of weapons beam into the room. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, a oh, pile of weapons. brought them to us. Without yes. people. <laughs> oh, great. Rue ordered him no. to beam those off, so he did. He sent them right back Fantastic. to you guys. And you see your phasers are also there, too, along with the phaser rifles. Oh, um, Moments later, Jiv is going to make a roll, since he's using the moments in the C here. So to clarify, the six people we want I'm not even kidding. I'm, I'm going to take pictures of this. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to take a picture of this right now. Hang on, I get to roll two. Yeah, go ahead and make a roll. I'm just going to take Good a picture girl, of Sally. this. Two more. Wow. I'm just, I'm showing this. So we're creating this. a ton of advantages I, I with all people, this momentum. I yeah. just want it's people to know. 
because Jiv is rolling critical after critical after critical tonight. Ooh, and uh, I don't want there to be any doubt. <laughs> so, so can one of the advantages, if I can ask. We did that. Yeah, with our bonus momentum, can, we want to try to create some advantage. Can we transport more than six bodies? Five. How? Um, can how I? Commanding officer. Oh, go ahead. So here, okay, mm -hmm. let, me, let me answer questions first. Yes. Okay. So, um, yes, if you want. Um, what we can do is you can spend two momentum to create an advantage here, and Jiv, along with an engineering crew, can work both transporter rooms and start beaming out 12 people at a time. Oh. They'll have to transfer a lot of deflector power, which That's isn't fine. a problem yet. Correct. It's gonna be but it's gonna minutes. be pretty soon. I understand. Should I volunteer to stay to get more patients on board? Because yeah, I'm leaking, but it's not gonna really affect me right now, and that it's way true. you have another armed Starfleet officer with you instead of just Talon. Um, and, the and the doctor's probably gonna be with the other patients here. And I mean- In my medical judgment, how close are we need to needing to get I'm her out of here? I'm just leaking, I mean- Hold, hold on, yeah. what, what was that? In my medical judgment, how close are we to needing to get her out of here? We've got oh, a no, while, she's right? she's fine. Yeah. She okay. could probably be exposed to the radiation levels that she's getting right now for another three or four hours. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. And, and, with, and, and it's but gonna she, take a hypo spray. But you, especially since, gotcha. since it seems like a lot of the technology on this research station has been sabotaged, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I might be able to help, you know, put something back together. So, or, clarif clarification question for the room. Yeah. How many patients did you say were even in here to begin with? You've got 14 in beds, nine of them are, are needing to be triaged, and gotcha. two of them were critical. 14 in beds. That's not adding on top. Nine of the 14, yeah. two of the 14. Okay. So 14 total. Yeah. Yeah. Because yep. we can start beaming all the patients out and then get the doctor up there with them too. Mm -hmm. And that way both doctors and can be And if someone on could wake up my friend, my department can uh, get a head start here while we're busy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Incoming. Yeah, I, I emergency medical that. hologram. I'm okay. part of that force field. I think I know exactly who should be treated. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> all right. So is that what y'all are doing then? So Jiv needs to make a roll just to beam everybody out. Jiv needs yep. to make a roll. Twelve bodies. We're staying behind Captain Martinez, Lieutenant Commander Talon, Ensign Sage for now. Okay. If we can have twelve bodies, I think I want to go. Uh. 10 patients and the two doctors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. If there's two patients that are not in critical condition, they can stay behind. That's a good plan. For now. Yeah. We, us three, will cover them, but then if I, if it's not clear to Lieutenant Commander Jiv, let's keep the beaming going. <laughs> so 12 at a time, 12 at a time, 12 at however well, long it takes. Then you'll be able to beam we'll the rest of the patients We'll start doing that whole right 100 per 12. hour thing, yes. focusing on the You're civilians. gonna start an evacuation, Yeah. Yes. Essentially. We have but to. Step that is one, apparently the order. If you're giving me 12, people at a time. I want 10 bodies, two doctors, with that emergency medical hologram, let's get it going. Um, okay, Jiv also says, Captain, if, if I have your permission, I can stretch the Sally Ride's systems to the limit and we can use the cargo bays to beam as well. Sorry. Outstanding, really. <laughs> outstanding. So we can get Jeff. as many people off. He says, the, the problem is, is there's still interference coming from the base. I'm fighting every time I try to beam somebody out. Can so you, it's, it's gonna slow me down considerably. Can you pinpoint where the interference is coming from and Talon and I can try and yes. deactivate whatever? I can tell you exactly where it's coming from. It's coming from whatever that underground facility is. Oh, oh crap. Mm. Oh. You know what, maybe Wait. we're not gonna go down there. <laughs> <laughs> well, and at this point, oh. yeah. at this point, you hear all of you in, in this room. Yeah. You hear on the intercom over uh, in the overhead speaker, you, you hear, I think it's time we had a conversation, Captain. Oh. Do I recognize the voice? No. Am I done hitting okay. things yet? Okay. <laughs> you? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> you're okay. like, um, this is great. Every time we break into combat, arm photon torpedoes. No, 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 no. Beam Rue under their bridge. Yeah. <laughs> Just beam Rue on there. Just beam yeah, now Rue. it really is like that River Tam scene <laughs> yeah. where just like the yeah. door opens and all it's just the rivers on the are on the floor. Yeah. Um, that order. Just beam Rue to the hull of the ship. <laughs> yeah. They'll take yeah. it from there. No proton. Uh, proton. Just proton, proton torpedoes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like no proton I wasn't about no to keep spending my stress. I wasn't about to keep spending my threat to keep them from being injured. I was like, nah, there. So Eric, to clarify, when Jiv said they're going to push it to the limit, what does that mean? How it means many we're using the transporter pads uh -huh. and they're using the cargo bays, because the cargo bays can beam as well. Correct. Yes. So they're using the transporter pads and the cargo bays to beam uh, P, uh, refugees. Does this mean everybody in this room? Does, does, that, mean, well. does this mean up to everybody in the room that we're currently in right now? Like uh, it has to 12? go through a cycle. You, the, the, the system itself is going to have to do one, two, 
three. You can total. You basically have a total of four transportation uh, transport uh, possibility here. Okay. You got two transporter rooms and two cargo bays. Now I know that the Intrepid class has capabilities of doing a little bit more, but I do know that. But the in, circumstances. In this, yeah, in the circumstances okay. in this case. Okay. So, ju so just so that I understand. Operationally, that's what you're able to use right now. Gotcha. But at least for this first go round. It's 12 bodies because transporter room one is going first. Is that what you're saying? And then like once those 12 bodies go, then it's a second transporter room, then another 12, and then a cargo bay, then another 12, X number, yeah. whatever, that essentially, kind of thing? Essentially to sort of like to, turn to chokehold the, 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 the making sure, essentially you're gonna be able to get them out in the, in the time span that you need, but it's gonna be tricky because Jiv is gonna have to fight that interference. Sure, sure, sure. Now somebody just came on the overhead comm that yeah. wants to talk to you. Uh huh. So that's where we are right now. This is Captain Martinez of the USS Sally Ride. Who am I speaking with? This is General Harta of the Zax Dorn Defense Force. General, thank you for speaking with me. You might not be aware, but our sensors, our incredibly advanced sensors, picked up that this planet is going to end in a matter of hours. And you've got a lot of sick people here. And quite frankly, if I'm being as blunt as possible, I don't care what you're up to. I don't care what anybody here is up to. My number one priority is to save every life possible before this planet ends. That's why I'm here. There was a distress signal, people are sick, so thank you for speaking with me, General. I hope that we can come to an understanding that I'm here to save lives, including your own. Because if you do not cooperate with Starfleet in this instance, you and your people will die. There is no escape. You are not gonna be able to take over my ship. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> I think the doctor's getting very impatient too. <laughs> We're running out of time, General. We haven't transported, right? We haven't started that yet. No, no. the transport. I'm, I'm, oh. I'm going under the assumption that the transport has happened as oh, ordered. Okay. Oh, happened. great. Oh, they're good. But, they're good. Do not but, send me until all the patients are gone. <sighs> oh, we're getting plenty of orders. We're super unhappy about today. Yeah. That's just that's just the day. So I'm, you know what? I am going to. I'm going to ignore the doctor's request. I'm sorry. It's got to be ten bodies, two doctors. I want Shashiros and Bev out of here, and then we'll go from there. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. I gotta do it. You but, give the but order. But again, the two um, patients left behind, not in critical condition. Okay, okay. So basically, you see all the patients being, uh, as this conversation is happening, the order's being executed. And doctor, you see the blue glow as you immediately feel yourself being up. Bob looks at you and goes, he kind of just stiffens up, and you go into like this blue glow just fills your vision as you see um, the facility in front of you begin to fade away. And now, Jiv is gonna make a roll. All right. Great. I love Jiv. Our DC is still <laughs> one, down you. one. Yeah. Jiv She's really helping us out tonight. Uh, thankfully, the difficulty was only gonna be two on this because um, the general has, the interference has stopped since he started talking to you. He's Ooh. lowered the interference. Oh, interesting. Fantastic. Um, as you hear Jiv go, the interference is gone. And doctor, you materialize inside sick bay. And you see materializing in sick bay beds are the patients coming in one by one by one by and one. And I have a department, so I'm like, all yes. right, folks, let's Your get Your nurses moving. are immediately, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you yeah. see, so when you, beam into the, when you beam into the med bay, um, doctor, you <coughs> see all of these trays are already set up and everyone's ready to receive critical condition patients all across the board. Fantastic. One there really and there. injured Zach Dorn in like the force field quarantine area. There is <laughs> actually, yes, there is in the quarantine area, you do see an injured Zach Dorn soldier who looks like they've taken a phaser blast at point blank range. Also, is he gonna live? Not much longer. Can I ask about <laughs> the crew person that was taken down? Did we lose a life or are they? The ensign. Can we, the ensign, the we ensign can yet? we transport them? When the when the boarders came aboard the ship, you said that they took down somebody. Yeah, they dropped the, the security officer that was in there. Yeah. Yes, you can beam them into the security. So they're still alive? For, for, um, for now, I would say Okay, I'll take it for now. I'll take for now. I'll take for now. Okay. The sick bay can triage that answer. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank all right, good, good, so good, good, because everyone's good, trying good, to do good, everything good. all at once, yep. we're gonna take care of this. So you're having your conversation while that's happening. I need to cut to the doctor who has just gone into their own battle. Yes. And then, yes. So, and then we're gonna go, so we're gonna go to the Combat doctor, and we're gonna go back to you guys. Um, doctor, as you beam into the sick bay, um, one of your nurses immediately walks up with your medical kit and goes, doctor, and hands you your kit. Thank you. Um, yeah. Bob looks so relieved and says, well, what, 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 what can I do? Um, doctor. One, one of the nurses goes, well, first, uh, if you don't mind, doctor, I'd like to treat him for radiation poisoning. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Put him to work, please. <laughs> you move off to the side, so it's you and a bunch of nurses. How's my ensign? 
uh, the ensign that was shot. Um, he has received what would probably be a critical wound. It looks like the blaster shot. It look, from, from judging by the the strike of the wound, it was not set for stun. But it looks like the Zach Dorn intentionally did not try to kill him. It's possible that these weapons don't have a stun setting. But it looks like the Zach Dorn was not shooting to kill. <sighs> However, there is a lot of trauma. As you're taking a look, it struck him in the upper part of his chest. His com badge has been completely destroyed. As it's, this phaser strike is just burned open his uniform. Um, and he's just lying unconscious on the ground. Or on the bed. Let's uh, go to work. All right, so I need you to start making, uh, this is gonna be an extended task roll. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, we so, almost got to do one. <laughs> your extended, t- yeah, he almost got to do an extended task roll. No. Okay, so extended tasks. This is a very unique system. Um, on the GM page. might have been researching these before the game, you guys. Oh, I might have been. Mm-hmm. Well, I knew, well, the thing is, is I knew Dr. Thurlow was gonna have a lot to do. Oh. Um, as, when combat was over, I knew you were gonna have your work cut out for you. So. Do you have the EMH stats? Oh yeah. Would you the like EMH them? hasn't been activated yet. Yeah, I said to turn it on. We, when? Yeah. She didn't wake up my friend. Yeah. Oh, oh. well, I'm assuming you have to do that, though, in sickbay. Oh. Okay, but the department, whatever, I turn him on. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're, just, so just so you know, um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that is that is what you meant when you were saying, okay, so he's there, that's fine. Okay, great. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a big deal. So he's, he's activated when you arrive. Um, in that case, when you beam in um, and you have the exchange, he strides up to you and goes, why don't you just get another doctor on board this ship? <laughs> so if you know sexy. one, call them, let's go. He follows up. <laughs> um, all right, so extended task. EMH is going to be assisting here as well. Um, okay. So extended task. Use this mechanism similar, blah, blah, blah. All right, so each extended task has a work track. It's going to be between 5 and 10. I'm going to say the work track here is 10. Is it just... So, does this extended task cover everyone in sickbay right now? Yes. Okay. I'm essentially making... This extended task is going to be a role to determine what happens in the scene. Now, the magnitude is what you're going to have to reach. Um, so you're going to be trying to reach, this is going to be a magnitude three. So you're so trying to treat, this is a time task. three breakthroughs, right? That's yes, that's correct. You're going to need three breakthroughs um, in order to succeed here, which you're more than capable of doing considering your medical, medicine, medical skill. Now, I'm also saying this is a timed task because you're trying to save lives here. So um, the resistance is, I am going to give it a resistance rating of one. Um, resistance rating is going to be at one. Oh, by the way, at this point, I'm guessing because border, just real quick as we go into this, as because borders have been repelled, I'm guessing we're going down to yellow alert. Are you standing down from red alert? Or are you still at red alert? No, I actually want the option to get weapons hot very quickly. Okay. All right, so the ship's still at red alert. As soon as the freaking Smart. captain gets... Smart out of the freaking facility. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and if we need to cut away, like, I can keep saving these people later. <laughs> yeah, that's a certain point, but for now, save some lives. It's just such a sure thing, like, you're gonna save all the lives. So like the base I- difficulty here is gonna be two. Okay. Hey, don't, don't use so, them for an extra day. So, what's that? I was asking her if she wanted to use momentum for an extra day. Oh, then you get to use your cautious. Yeah. So, momentum. Da, da, da. Oof. We're down to five. Yes. Uh, actually, I'm going to make it a work. I'm going to make the work track twelve. This is going to be tough. You're magnitude it's from five to ten. I'm going to make it twelve. Okay. Magnitude is going to be three. Resistance is one. The base difficulty here is going to be two. Do you want another dice? <laughs> so that go ahead and make one? your first roll, and we'll yeah, see we how could, far along you move along the track. I mean, uh, we're, uh, we could spend more momentum, two more momentum, to get an, uh, another dice if you want. Sure. Yes. Thank you. I We're hope this three. pays off. Um, okay. What okay, we'll be, I'll is we'll this role? Is it reason medicine or is it something else? This is going to be reason medicine. Okay. Yep. Good. You're using your strongest stat Good. here <laughs> as you're coordinating your medical team to try to save all the lives of the people in this room. I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch. Yeah, you're like opposite room here. <laughs> <laughs> you are as good at saving lives. And her, and her focus comes into play, correct? At healing people yes, in your absolutely. med bay as I am sending people to your med bay. Thurlow, you <laughs> go to go. work doing your job here. I want you to see. Go ahead and make your roll. Uh, uh, starting with this little ensign. Mm-hmm. Two, three, four, five, six successes. 
six successes. So yes. how do we uh, do the math here? That's rad. Um, so, okay. Two of my focuses, but for the record, yeah, I, I, I only rolled four die. Six, but. so five, four, so you're gonna roll, okay, so you rolled six successes total? Yes. A nine, and eight, and two fours. Rad, okay. Wow, this is gonna be pretty good. Um, okay, so you're going to subtract one of those successes because of resistance. Because of resistance, oh. so five. Um, that's correct. Oh, yeah. And it was so a difficulty five. two. So four, three. So you have a threshold. You beat. You beat the. So you have a threshold of three. Basically, you got three successes over the difficulty level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so what's your medicine? Uh, my medicine is five. So roll eight dice. Yes. Am I my challenge die? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You can borrow mine. Sorry, I did not get a chance to do an extended task during our practice. So I'm just making sure I'm doing this right. Now Same. you roll five or more. It's an automatic breakthrough. Was that five challenge die? Apparently, got this. No. eight challenge die is what you said, right? Yeah. That's correct. Eight. Three plus my oh, five. Eight. Okay, eight. I get it. Yep. Oh, that's a lot of blanks. Now, one, two. Uh, you still got it, though. Is I've there capacity to spend momentum to reroll in an analogous way to reroll damage? I was damage? just about to mm. ask that. What did you roll? Well, what I got was five with three effects. You but got five that successes? Counts, like, I'm yeah. counting the effects already in that. Yeah, it, technically effects here don't really come into play. This is okay. mostly just how you move along the world. So just well, you just said if I got five though. or more, I get a breakthrough, didn't you? That's correct. Great, right. okay, then five. So you got a breakthrough. Yeah. yeah. So then the I magnitude, saw the four so that's great. So the magnitude was three, it's gonna immediately drop to two. Great. Um, so you need two more breakthroughs. So, um, so. But we got three did more I momentum back I, too, correct? Does so this generate momentum? In addition Anytime to? Anytime you score above successes, you're gonna get more momentum. Great. So we got th yep. our three momentum back. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Boop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop. All right. So we got our three moments. So I'm going to get back to you here in just a second. But Frollo's hands are just—it's—it's it's a symphony of healing taking place <laughs> down in sick bay, uh, doctor. As you're moving from patient to patient, um, with the facilities that you have at your disposal, you're actually able to do an incredible amount of good in a short amount of time. My hands it, are moving like crazy, but my antenna are weirdly still. Hmm. Right. Just kind of stiff. Where they as usually you're just move focused. around to a, a effect to show my emotion. They're mm -hmm. just. Focused. Um, yeah. Hyper focused. Mm -hmm. At one point, at one point, you see the EMH is watching you as he's assisting. He hands you uh, one of the hypo sprays. Watches you uh, basically pull one of the patients back from the brink. And after he d you do, he says, "Hmm. Well, I might have been wrong. Perhaps there are two doctors in you." <laughs> and we cut to. Back to the Captain Martinez, who is engaged in a conversation with General Harta. Mm -hmm. um, you heard General Harta over the intercom say, That's correct, Captain. I've lowered the resistance field. I'm fully aware of the predicament. I know that this planet is breaking apart. Essentially, Captain, I've looked 20 moves ahead, and I can see that you have the upper hand here. There's not a lot I can do. And I know you've scanned our weapon hold, and I know, you know, I know you've discovered what we have, so I'm willing to surrender to you. I'm glad. I am incredibly relieved because, like I said before, I don't care about that right now. The important thing is to save as many lives as possible. A few moments after you say that, you hear shh, and stepping into the room from the hallway, um, you see a Lucal, his eyes widen, and he steps back as a Zach Dorn enters, who's dressed just the same, um, also has military uh, sort of, it looks like uh, medals, so to speak, something that denotes rank, mm -hmm. clearly to the Zach Dorn military. He steps into the room and folds his hands and says, Captain Rafael Martinez, on behalf of what's left of the Zach Dorn military, I surrender to you. I accept. Get our people out of here. I'm going to do that, I promise you that. How many people are uh, in need of medical attention? Just the ones in here, but a few of my soldiers have started to suffer radiation poisoning ever since the shield started weakening when the planetary events I began understand. to happen. I understand. We'll transport them first, and then the rest of the, of basically anybody here on the in the facility. I've got uh, transporter crews uh, waiting by, standing by to transport large amounts of people as quickly as possible. This is going to be an extended task on Jiv's part. Yes. And Rue, I'll let you assist on this. Or Rue, I keep calling you Rue, Sage. Uh, actually, I was going to suggest if uh, if the transporters were going to be under too much stress to transport almost 300 people, I could load a whole bunch into the hovercraft and drive it back to the ship. Well, or you also they could you, probably drive. You it. also have shuttlecrafts too. 
Yeah. Essentially, y'all have the means to evacuate everybody. It's just a matter of making the die rolls for the extended task to make sure you get gotcha. it in done on Do time. Do we know okay. about the shuttlecraft that's in the middle of it? Because if I could Rue get Rue has not informed okay, anybody correct. of that little plan. Because if I could get beams to that, I could take that right. shuttle and start I was actually, shuttling like, back and forth. When we were talking about everything, I was really hoping part of all of those advantage folding in was that we were using the leapfrog. Mm -hmm. Colorado thing that I put it out there for. I mean, originally that was what was going to happen. Yeah. And then Jiv pulled his magic and you were able to sort of skip over that. But it does mean that at a moment's notice you had an entire security team that was running distance from the facility that yeah. could have. So you got, yeah. you still, you still basically have an ace in your pocket here. Um, and and I feel the. Like it's breaking the chess metaphor, but I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Breaking the chess metaphor? Well, um, just adjusting. You basically have, you basically have, uh, uh, another transporter pad that can do that, but it's, but essentially, again, this is all minor details. What's going to happen to is this basically contributes to the action of the extended role that y'all are going to have to do to evacuate. You no longer have interference coming from the base as he oh, surrendered to you, so beautiful. he's dropped that. Beautiful. Yep. 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 Um, so that's going to make Jiv's job a lot easier. Good. Um, so and it gives us better sensor reads on people. So if someone is, for instance, yes. Trojan horsing into exactly. our ship, right. exactly. Oh. Then we can take a look means, at that on sensors. It also means Talon is going to be able to keep track of exactly when seismic events are about to happen, oh. Good. when Good. atmospheric events are about to happen. Oh, so we can get a heads up for our tractor beam yes. like thingy. Mm -hmm. So, here's so let, me, let me paint the picture yeah. for y'all. Okay. Mm -hmm. At this point, your plan is probably going to work. It's going to come down to rolls, okay. but okay. it's acting now. He's surrendered, everybody is putting their weapons down, and this research facility is basically standing down. There are biogenic weapons here still, but they're gonna, that problem's gonna solve itself when a giant <laughs> freaking planetoid crashes into this place. Yeah. So are we going to be able to evacuate everyone using the transporters in the time we need? Is that, you, that's a that's, yes. Like I said, it's gonna come it. down to a die roll. Okay, yeah. I'm trying to determine if a shuttle would even be needed. That's, I'm, yeah. what I'm saying is, is you're using every means it. necessary. Yeah. It's yeah. all being factored okay. into the die roll. Okay, okay. So, so we want you fresh for when we get off of this planet in imperfect oh. condition. That's yes. true. Yes. That's so cool. let's go ahead. This planet is not gonna be super happy. Uh, um, yeah, I can help. So let's go ahead and start doing this real quick. So I'm going to have you guys make an extended roll now. Okay. I'm I'm guessing that I'm guessing the best way to do this with the, with this is going to be Jiv mm -hmm. because yeah. he has the most technical acumen. Yes. But um, in this case, typically only one assist is allowed. Mm. However, with Sage and Talon both operating sensors and uh, you operating, <coughs> you also have engineering skills as well, <laughs> and you're piloting the shuttlecraft. I'm gonna let you both roll a d20 to assist oh, Jiv. Okay. So you may not even need to spend momentum here. Okay. Um, can I do command assist? Yeah, absolutely. To get in on this. And what's the, uh, what's the difficulty? Okay, so here's, this one's gonna be tricky. Okay. okay. So the track on this one is gonna be 15. Okay. It's gonna be, the, it's gonna be, uh, that's gonna be the work track for this. Okay because it's going to take a spell to get... What? Mm -hmm. um, so the work track is 15. The magnitude is going to be 3. Okay. Um, and the resistance is going to be 2. Which means you're going to be subtracting 2 successes off of every roll. So this is going to be tricky. And it's Should timed. Um, How many well, you're rolling two. thing. So we do at least get down to oh, one. That's okay. correct. And we, so we get and Sally we might, as well. Yeah, and we and do we get might Sally. we need to keep some momentum for getting off the planet. That's true. Yeah. Oh, good idea. Yeah, yeah you're right. So, I might need that later. Mm. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, six. So we have six home. dice rolling. So Let's see how it goes for the first one, and then we can assess. Right. Okay. This so is an extended task. This is how we're going to do it. Okay. Yeah. So you guys are going to make your extended rolls, Okay. and yep. then we're going to cut back to sick bay. Yep. And the Got doctor it. is going to be making yeah, her extended rolls to save lives. All right, here we go. All right. All right. Ooh. Ooh. Four. A success. What is it? What am I rolling, by the way? Control engineering, Difficulty is two. Yeah, so. Yeah, success. Mm. Success, four. Four. Yeah. And, um. Okay. I'm still what was baby. this I'm roll for me? That is, me? Yep. okay, so. Was this four. a. The for, the, for the command assist? Command? Yeah. Uh, I'm letting you assist with, okay, so. I should switch that. This is gonna be command and, uh, I'm gonna say that's gonna be presence and command. Okay, so that's, um. One assist. Actually, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm going to yeah. make that control and command. Uh, still one short. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's that? Still one short. One short. Okay. Yeah, but the Sally made it. That's okay. So, okay, Sally made it. Yeah. And we both made it. Mm-hmm. 
So that's three extra successes to whatever Jiv's rolling. Four, because you rolled crit, right? Or no. Well, wait, what was Are I... Are using a focus? Yeah, what, what was my... What should I have been using? It should here? be, I'm using your science and reason on this. Oh, goodness, yeah. Yeah. So and since my science and reason is 17, since I got a four, does that... Was you using focus? Focus? Was like, What's your focus? focus? Every life has value. No, no, that's your value. That's determination. Oh. Your focus, like your oh, yeah, no, computers no. or... No. It, no. Oh. Well, here, no, no, here's the thing though. Is uh, the reason, th so this is what I'm rationalizing. I'm rationalizing that Talon is helping by using the sensors to be able to uh, predict when there's going to be interference. Oh, so I'm saying okay. you're basically so monitoring sensor. the moon. Yeah. Then your, absolutely, your contribution yeah. scientifically here is you're helping coordinate the windows of opportunity and beaming oh, okay. people over. Then yes, I would say. So I'll allow your focus to, to okay. take place here. So how many did you get? What's that? How many successes did you get then with your Oh, focus? I got, I got, I only rolled one die. Right, right. Got two, successes. So two, two successes. Two successes. Yeah. One success here. Right. One okay. with Sally Wright. So we have four total. Cool. So just need to Four from us. Four from this side of the room. Ooh. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah. You breach that. You get a breakthrough easy on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Great. So I'm going to cut back to, so basically evacuation is underway. Good. Shuttles are going back and forth. The general, um, all, of, all of them have come up to the top. Um, he's helping. The soldiers have put down their arms and are actually helping evacuate at this point. So, yeah, so here's how I want it to go. Just to ease Commander Rue, obviously the Starfleet personnel is going to go with the first group uh -huh. of, uh, of people that we can transport along with the other two patients. So all of the patients that were in that uh, uh, medical room should be on board along with all of the Starfleet personnel. Every single, whatever the sensors are picking up, like armed guard or person that had a weapon on them that's getting mm -hmm. beamed to the ship, the weapon stays behind, the person gets transported to a cargo bay, a brig, whatever space we have where they're there, but they're safe, but it's not necessarily a prison, but not necessarily like, yeah, walk around the ship, something like that. And oh, then yeah, from then on- a whole partitioning exactly, force field scheme exactly. that I've been developing since I heard about an idea yes. of an evacuation in and a trap. And then it's civilian, <laughs> civilian, civilian. Where are you in all this? Are you in? The, I'm guessing you're in the cargo hold. Or are you on the bridge? Where are Me? you? Me? Yeah. yeah. I guess we go to the bridge. We okay. We, we work, we're well, doing I'm everything. Back and okay, forth cool. Still, yes. right? I'm shuttling back and forth. Um. Okay. So I'm not on right. the salary ride right now. Yeah. But, so okay. doctor, as you're going to other person, uh, you're going person to person. Um, I need you to make your next roll. It's going to be the same roll as it was last time. Um, difficulty is still the same. And people, so the all the final patients are arriving. It's just more yeah. bodies, warmer cave. More people. Yeah, uh, a few yeah. more people one beam more, in. More. Some of them have minor injuries. Um, one Zach Dorn beams in, uh, and you instantly recognize them as they beam into sick bay, um, looking bruised and bloodied, but not terribly injured. Um, it is Dr. Prinash. <gasps> what? Beams Whoa. into sick bay. Dr. And is clutching Pranash. their side. Um, looks up at you and says, Doctor. Thank you for calling us. Reports of your death were exaggerated. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor. He grabs your arm and says, The general. Don't ever trust him. He is a fanatic, and he is dangerous, and he is brilliant. He has held us hostage for months. He turned our research facility into a weapons testing ground. They used science to make us build weapons. I've lost so many people, and he- You've saved more than you know. Focus on healing. <laughs> Your cheery attitude, he just kind of looks at you and, I need to lie down. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see uh, uh, <laughs> Dr. Bob seeing Pranash just, my God, doctor, rushes over to him and catches him and says, I I I'll take care of him. Captain? Yes. Pranash is, Dr. Pranash is alive, and the what? general should be beamed to the most locked room we have. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Jiv looks over at Rue yeah. and just goes. <laughs> Do we need to beam our commander in there with him? <laughs> Sir? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Interrogation? 
Maybe. Is that a, so, is that to give you an idea, is? as the evacuation is happening, he's looking around. Yes. And he's kind of just like, he's making eye contact with a few of his soldiers, and they're looking back at him. Yeah. And they're as he's ushering them in, he's about to signal one of his soldiers, and all of a sudden, <laughs> he just beams out. Um, I don't necessarily want to cooperate with one of the armed soldiers, but what I want to do is, just like a Lucal, if a, if a person like Lucal knows the location of everybody in the facility, I want them on the bridge pointing to, I want them working with engineers, with transporters, okay. to, you know what I mean? Like, Lucal's, I want yeah. to work that with a scientist helping. who wants mm. to get lives out of there. I'm not about yeah. to work with somebody that's like, we surrender. No, no, yeah, no, yeah, you're yeah, in yeah, the yeah. brig for now. <laughs> yeah. we'll get to you're you still under arrest, yeah. Betty. Yes. You're still All right, freaking the so, world. Amy, let's get Dr. Tholo making that extended roll real quick. One momentum, gone. Uh, did I? Right, oh so yeah. Make oh, your die I roll. just automatically grabbed for you. Um, oh yeah. You okay. Do, it's, it's I do still, the same with my attacks. I'm just like I'm always mm, using my caution. Mm, still mm, difficulty to uh, still. There's a really good chance resistance one that you're gonna six that you're gonna because the diff because the work track is twelve and you rolled five successes last time, which means you bumped up five on the work track. So if you, you you can get a breakthrough right here. If you get a breakthrough and finish the work track, which is a second breakthrough. You, you've succeeded. Um, may I spend for one more? Yes. Yes. All right. So Make your roll. Right Make your roll. Perfect. We're down to three. Well, hey, we're about to put me in the room with the general. Oh! Ooh. Ooh. Oh, no, she did it all on that. <laughs> 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 we saw the dice in the same order. Uh, well, one, two, three, four, five successes, one complication. But you have a reroll for your cautious. Oh, I do! <laughs> Cautious. Oh, oh. Thank you, when I have spent one or more uh, momentum to gain an extra die on a medical roll, you get to I re may reroll. Let's, Thank you. Let's reroll that complicated let's one. Let's reroll this one. Da -da -da. One more success, please. Yeah. I like that so much more than a complication. Six successes. <laughs> one is a crit crit. A crit 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 crit. Six it's successes. Yours. Thank you. That yeah, was my dice. Why did? Where were you? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll need you later. Don't worry, I didn't say so that. So six plus <laughs> my five medicine? No, six, yeah. uh, one resistance and two difficulty. Uh, so five successes, the difficulty was two. Uh, so we have so again, momentum three, back. three momentum back. More, yeah. That's correct. Boop, boop, um, so the three and then my five medical make it eight challenge dice again? Uh, yes. Okay. This is so fun, I like watching her go. go, 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 go. Uh, okay. All right, what you get? Ooh, things are there. One, one two, two, three, three four, four, five, six, six seven, eight. Yeah. One, two, okay. three, four, five, six. Okay, um, doctor, like ahead of schedule, <laughs> um, along with the EMH and your nurses, you are able to stabilize and save every single person you have wow. beamed to your medical facility. Yes. Now, that's why she's the doctor. I'm telling you the I'm telling you the results of that role because this is going to coordinate with what's happening over here because we're in the last mo the last few moments of this particular game session. So we're going to move over to the Sally ride now. So while this is happening, let me get the uh, extended roll on this. So we had this is going to be a tough roll. I'm so am I still threshold, assisting with the shuttle? We're back up on the yeah. Right? Oh yeah, we're all we're back up. Yeah. Can back Shiv can Shiv spend a point for momentum here? Of course. Yes. Yeah. We're getting the assists. Down yes. five. Thank you. Okay, cool. And we're, Let's make the rolls. Right, okay. You two. Oh, oh, oh right, right. Oh. Oh that? my goodness. A success. Uh huh. One it success finally for me? happened. Is this a complication? Oh no. Is it a eighteen? Is that a complication? No. 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 Okay. Twenties complication. Then it's just nothing. Okay. So what one finally? success. Did Sally succeed? Yes, Sally succeeded. Yeah. Two successes. Two. What finally happened, Eric? Uh, Complication. Uh, Shiv rolled a 19, a 20, and a, and a critical success. Oh, so, so Shiv, four successes. So Shiv ah. gets two successes on his end, but there's a complication. Okay. And four successes total. total breaches the threshold. So we're gonna roll, let's see, in his his engineering, and then how many, uh, four? We so you had got, one, you won? and Sally okay. Wright had one. Okay, cool. So do I roll anything? No. No. Okay. Um, did we gain that momentum back? Are we back up to six? Yes. Yeah, we're back up. Nice. Oh yeah, right. Okay. So, so you're gonna drop. Okay. So you're gonna. You actually. You actually are going to hit. Um, you actually are gonna hit one of the magnitudes with a breakthrough. Um, so that's moving along. However, there was a complication. So as y'all are beaming and transporting back, you're about 20 minutes into the process when Talon, you immediately, you all hear beep beep, 
beep, beep, on the sensors. Um, Talon, looking down at the console, you immediately see that a seismic event is inevitable. It's imminent. It's happening right now. Um, you can even predict that it's going to be at least on the Richter scale, on the Earth Richter scale, it's probably going to be at least a five or a six. Whoa, whoa, um, five or a six? It's okay. in that range. Okay. Sally Wright's predicting it. And about the okay. same time you get the alert, um, it's up to you to inform the crew that's about to happen. Captain, <laughs> a seismic event is imminent. Um, pretty much your crew is going to have to brace for impact on this because the Sally Ride's thing. still parked. Okay. Oh, no. Uh, what's our status on the uh, the transport? How many of the bodies have we transported at this point? Uh, How many well, left? let's see. You breached one of the magnitudes. You need two more to go. Okay. But you've moved up the work track, so you've got, you need about six more successes. Okay. And... No, I'm shuttling. No, five no. more successes to, to finish the work track to get another breakthrough. So, um, so, that'd be so you're gonna have to do one more round at least. 200 that we've gotten or 200 that we still need to I mean, get? If we did, we got about two thirds of the way through. We have like gotcha. five left. So that's yeah. like 200 people out of 300, yeah? Okay. You're basically, yeah. yeah. Basically yeah. you're gonna need, you're, it's somewhere in the range, but you're basically gonna need a, a, at least one more extended task roll to try to get that magnitude okay. three. I'm oh shuttling did, now, am I aware of this? Do um, I hear the This alert? is probably, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that the alert goes out on all channels yes. that an earthquake is about to take place. Awesome. So and how did we do part. on the tractor beam uh, tectonic thing that I set up at the beginning? So the tractor mm. beam thing that you were setting up at the beginning, yeah. what the science officers would come back to is they would need to do this from orbit because they need mm. to be able to find a... Uh, a Fault? Fault line, thank you. Yes, mm. they need a fault line to yeah. be able to use the tractor beam. And even then it's going to be really tricky. Um, but they would need to be in orbit, essentially, yeah. to do and that. and because I didn't hear that a while ago, we couldn't I would, that. I would, I would essentially say that um, giving you the options, they would have probably informed you of this, because it's, it's, this is not something that's difficult it's to write It's not con. pertinent, yeah. is the answer. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, so we're moving forward. Uh, the earthquake is happening now. As you guys get the alert, you hear it come down in Med Bay. You hear everyone brace for impact coming down uh, from Jiv. Um, and the Sally Ride, unfortunately, because of all the power she's diverting to getting people in and off, yeah. her uh, stabilizers are still in place. The deflector shield in which she draws upon to stabilize her while she is pan planet side, um, the energy that's being fed through that system is kind of playing against the repulsor tech that's keeping the Sally Ride balanced. Mm -hmm. So there is a rattling effect as that's an okay. earthquake just as long as those force fields hold. begins to shake the ship. Um, with our progress of how many people we're transporting, with the idea that we've been using transporters along with all four and all, all four of our shuttles and our one runabout, uh, maybe grabbing the last 100 people. It'll right? come down to the roll. Right. Uh, what I'm saying is, if we need to divert any power from transporters now that we're sort of like two thirds of the way in mm -hmm. to stabilize something, but if it's just a rockin', if this boat is just a rockin', I can handle that. It'll depend it? if you if how you succeed on the next on the next. I got roll. you. Okay. All right. Ready? So that's happening. Um, the earthquake takes place. Sally Ride suffers no structural damage whatsoever. The research facility, however, Talon, you were able to detect the research facility is in, it's been beaten up a little bit from okay. that. Oh, boy, um, okay. The crops have certainly been damaged. The combination of the storm, the lightning, the wind, the thunder, the earthquakes, it's all starting to happen now. Okay. Um, by the way, the moon is terrifyingly large and <laughs> visible through the clouds. Great. Great, it's um, Majora's Mask. Great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Come on, how much um, more time before a critical meltdown from the facility? That's exactly what I was going it's to. It's gonna depend on, uh, you're not far away. Okay. Um, because of the time it's taking to get off, I would say you're probably within the, the two hour threshold. Okay. Sure, I feel like I'm in school. <sighs> yeah. So, uh, the facility uh, just suffered a lot of damage. Was there any damage that would affect people from getting out or injuries? I would let or? you know. Huh, okay. I would let you know cool. if there was a complication coming up. Okay, gotcha. cool. So, and did we end up beaming that general to a place? I'm assuming he's in the brig. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good. So and the doctor said a, a special, yeah. like, the most locked one. It sounded like a, a I separate. Know. I almost want to beam him. There's, there's not a special him. brig. There's well, just the well, brig. A separate room. I don't you beam know him into what? I don't know if we've discussed this out loud, but. I had an idea. Maybe we could beam him like into a Jeffrey's tube or something. Just something where he literally cannot move and talk to anybody. Some kind of an isolation chamber, okay. something. Do we have anything like that on the ship? I mean, the brig. Or just <laughs> you could beam him into the brig and just order nobody to talk to him. 
Okay. Or just yeah. a room that has a force field of some kind. Just the brig has the yeah, yeah yeah. The yeah. brig is brig. the brig is the, the, the most secure place, place on the ship. Place. But the brig is filled with it's a also house. Super Do we have one full. big brig or multiple? And they and he can okay, potentially Marcus. coordinate from there. So there are force fields on all decks that you can activate to seal in case of environmental controls and all of that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start uh, just so you all know. At this, we've reached a point where I'm going to start giving myself threat. Okay. okay. Because we're Let's not moving forward. We keep going, guys. <laughs> all right. And I'm going to start doubling up on the threats. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, is it our? Do we roll again to? Uh, you, we're the doctor. It's the doctor's turn to start rolling to oh. finish off this. Did, okay. Oh wait, you did you actually nope. hit both thresholds last yeah. turn, right? Okay. Oh, so yeah. we're going to cut She's back good. down to sick bay. As I'm on call. If there's if there's a breach in the system, I can put people back to work. It looks like but. everybody here has been stabilized. But if the ship gets rattled like this anymore, you might have some medical issues coming up with people who are being tossed about like rag dolls inside the ship. Oh, Sally Ride is becoming a little more unstable. Captain. <laughs> yes. Maybe we could not shake the ship around. <laughs> Uh, I'll see what I can do, yeah. <laughs> Lovely, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Talon, do we need to divert any power from uh, uh, transporters to stabilizers? Uh, I'm can reading we? the... I'd like to read the That's an operations thing. That's an operations thing? Yeah, oh, okay, you could do it. And, um, but Ensign Sage isn't on if the you bridge. Spend, I tell you what, if you spend two I'm momentum, busy. I'll give you an advantage. So. Let's do it. Um, all right. So we'll Jiv is going to start shunting port. a little more power into the stabilizers. Thank you, Jiv. Um, all right. So then I need to make another roll here. Right, Jiv is going to try to get the last batch off. If he can hit two, all right. we can get we can get this gone. Two. Get this taken care of. Otherwise, you guys, if you don't hit the magnitude, Success. Success. if you if you don't hit it this Success. round, if you don't hit the breakthroughs you need this round, oh. um, Sally Wright is officially going to be in danger. Uh, we all got a success. So okay. Oh, you got two. Yeah. So we have four successes. Success. No crits on that one, but still, very good. Wow. Four How many successes? We have four. Four here. Four? Or... One of them was a critical success. Okay, so four, engineering, two, three. okay. Threshold. All right, let's see how he does. He does very well. So we'll die. Just gonna take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what it is with Jiv, guys. I really don't. But Jiv is a beast. No one's doubting you. It's okay. So I'm assuming we're getting our momentum back. Uh, yeah. You are going to get your momentum back. Um, basically, you you hit the threshold. All right. All right. Um, so just within the appropriate time frame, you get the last person off just as this planet starts to go cataclysmic. The... The funnel clouds, there are F5 tornadoes touching down all over the planet. Now, F5 tornadoes, as some of y'all know, are enough to completely decimate a landscape. Mm -hmm. Hurricanes, everything. Dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. It's all happening right now. And the moon has actually begun to pull some of the atmosphere from the planet as it's getting closer. So you're actually seeing this eerie effect of clouds they're spiraling both down in the funneling effect and another funneling effect begin to spiral up as the gravitational forces cool. are starting to conflict. Oh, it's gonna um, be everyone is on the bridge at this through. point. I'm gonna assume uh, everyone's on the bridge. The hatches are battened down. Uh, people in the cargo bays are holding on as the Sally Ride goes into blue alert as you guys are getting ready to take off. Um, the lightning strikes have gotten very periodic. Uh, or, I'm sorry, very frequent. Um, so right now, it's going to be all on Ensign Sage. Taking the Sally so, right off. High momentum. Yeah. There's um, for one day. Okay, Ensign Sage. <laughs> you yeah. guys watch as the view screen comes up, as everyone situates themselves in their chair after a harrowing couple of hours. You've managed to beam out and get the last of these people evacuated. Yes. Um, sitting down in the chair, Ensign Sage, you see the the, the console, it lights up and it gives you an idea of what you're gonna have to battle through to get off planet. Um, the Sally Ride can do this. She is designed to go through a whole lot worse than this, but it's gonna be tricky. So, okay, I wanna use two extra momentum to get an extra die. What is the difficulty yes, here? Yes, I'm about so, to give you that. So the we're down to three. Yeah. The Great. difficulty is gonna be three. Okay. And the complication threshold is gonna be four. Ooh. Oh my God. Uh, I would also like to use my determination Okay. To, is that to get an extra die? Is that how it works? Mm -hmm. Determination, immediately, if you want to spin it like this, it will oh, yeah. immediately give you an extra die that has a critical success on it. Uh, the faster I fly, the more I'm free. Would that work? Okay. I'm trying to get free of this planet, y'all! So, the faster you fly, the more... 
the faster I fly, the more I'm free is one of yeah. my, yeah? I think, I think, yeah, that seems to be thematically appropriate, kind of ties in. Okay. And I'd like to help my little bird out. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'll allow one assist on this. Actually, to be honest with you, the person that's probably most qualified to help with this is Talon. Yeah. Because you are going to be able to use the Sally Ride sensors to help her navigate out of this and through the Let's gravitational anomalies. I have Did you focus. say a sensors check? This. It's a sensors check. Oh, oh, I like that. I also <laughs> have a, a focus nice on navigation fly. and helm. Okay. So I'll, I'll be using this that. This is what the Sally Ride was built for. She was built okay. to fly. This and she was Sage built to was fly built better than yep, any other starship now. in the fleet. I might not have been able to fight that random so structure dude. Con? Uh, structure con. And I'm control con? Daring am, con? Am I daring? This would be daring. I'm going to say, no, I'm going to say oh. this is going to be control con. Okay. And I am I just science be daring. Reason. This is going to be, yes, science and reason. All right. Here reason we go, everybody. All right. So the difficulty is, what did I say the difficulty was? Four. Three. 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 No, three. difficulty three. is three with this. Three. Two. Difficulty is three. Complication threshold is four, which yeah, means so. if you roll a 16 or higher, it's a complication. Oh, Holy okay. Moses, how many threats did that cost? All right. Huh? The For rest a complication of the range, my goodness. It costs a, a couple. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. It's the last roll at the game. No. I'm going to throw everything I got okay. at you. Hers one, two, three, four, five successes for me, Ooh. but one complication. Okay, one complication. Okay. All right. But five successes, so I'm fine at. What did you, what did you get? Uh, one success. Success. So six, is, six, six. No, uh, her structure con is oh. only 11. Gotcha. Mm. So, so no success. So six. Six so Talon, successes. You got, it, yeah. Too long got one, a success. One, success. one success. Okay, yeah. so you got the assist. Mm -hmm. Okay. So six. So we got our momentum back. Full momentum. Yep, back. we did. Okay. Um. Wait, 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 wait. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Great. I'm. I'm gonna use my um untapped potential. Oh. Oh, because oh, you're, that's yeah. right. You're a rookie. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, whenever my character succeeds as attacks for which they bought one or more additional dice with our momentum. They may re-roll. Oh, it's one d six. Never mind. <laughs> oh. Hold on. There's more. <laughs> um. Whenever an attempt to task, no, 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 it's yeah. By the ships, you may roll one d six, and you receive bonus momentum equal to the roll of the dice. Huh. Okay, but it, it says one adds one point to threat, but I don't know if that's the case. No, 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 but uh, I need to roll one a d twenty. So I want to re-roll. Are you I don't trying get, to look for? A re I'm trying to effect? not get okay. a complication okay, okay. here. Uh, mm -hmm. a techni technical expertise. Whenever I attempt. Uh, a task using the ship's computer or sensors, which I just did, I may re-roll 1d20. Is this oh, yeah, it was a sensors roll because the DC went down. Mm. Yeah. Well, I did, did you it didn't actually, because you were oh, using yeah. structure con. Yeah, that's true. Oh. We didn't uh, end up using sensors. She was using the sensors to help me navigate. But she didn't make that roll. Word. That no, I didn't fun. make the roll. Talon did. Talon right, right, right. But, but that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, the oh. primary roll was yeah. not sensors. Yeah, Hold yeah. on, I'm going to find a talent. Then uh, triloquism. Okay. <laughs> Distraction dance. The storm doesn't notice us. Yeah. Um, okay, I got a complication. Six successes All right. complication. Bring it on. Um, so the Sally ride rocks. Um, and I don't mean like, I mean, she obviously rocks, but I mean, uh, basically the ship lurches as you guys take off. Um, you watch as the planet starts to vanish beneath you. Um, the cloud cover, the sheets of rain. Um, you're watching the earthquake. It's not quite on the level of the destruction of the Genesis planet, but it's getting pretty close. You're watching the ground start to split wow. open as uh, the magnitude of the earthquake has jumped to the nines. Um, the entire planet, you're, you're watching the death of an M-class planet. <laughs> Um, as you begin to pull away all of those years of research, all of the crops, everything, you just see it vanish under a gray haze as the planet is killing itself underneath the gravitational forces of this moon as it's about to impact. Um, it's not getting out of the storm that's the problem. When you enter into the stratosphere and you see the blue glow as you fight through the gravitational pull, you immediately see the moon is impossibly close and impact is imminent. Um, the ride begins to shake. As you pilot, uh, as you steer her basically through these gravitational shears mm -hmm. that are taking place, this huge planetoid is getting closer and closer. Uh. It's it's an eerie sight, everyone, to see this moon getting closer to the planet. You're watching a lot of the clouds literally being the atmosphere near the moon as it's making connection with the atmosphere. the The atmosphere itself is beginning to fall apart near where the moon is. So it'd be entirely possible that if you were in the middle of that hurricane in the eye, looking straight up, you could see straight into space where the moon was. It's kind of the effect that's happening Whoa. right now. Um, the Sally ride buckles a bit. Um, 
I'm not gonna play the complication up right now. Essentially, it's just a bumpy ass ride getting out of here. But as you guys leave orbit, you watch in rear view as the moon very quietly, you see the impact. Getting that data, Talon. Um, yeah. Sensors oh, are, am yeah. I? Mm -hmm. Essentially, the impact of the moon colliding with the top of the planet, the, uh, there's no equivalent in nuclear explosion. There's no equivalent. It's the, the, the destruction is, I mean, th there's a white flash on the screen as you just see the impact. Are we far enough away? Like, do I there's, a, there's a shock wave, but it doesn't look, but I'm gonna rule, I'm gonna say the complication is as the shock wave hits the ship. Okay. It, you, again, you get a bit of a bumpy ride. Mm -hmm. um, the Sally ride is kind of tossed a little bit, Whew. but she's in her element now. She's up amongst the stars and she corrects herself. Um, you're all just watching in silence as the explosion. Um, the, sh the door opens as uh, Dr. Pranaj steps onto the bridge um, with uh, Jiv next to him, and next to him, and they just stand side by side watching the planet just destroy itself. It's just this moment of silence as you're all watching this event take place, and you just you hear Pranaj go, "My God, I've never seen anything like that." Captain, I, you saved us on many, many levels, you and your crew. And I'm told that my scientists in sickbay are all gonna make a full recovery because your doctor is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she is, yes. And the general is secure? Absolutely. Captain, I'm gonna go lay down, but Sally Ride, she's a science vessel. That and more, yes. Make sure she always stays that way, Doctor, uh, Captain. I'll do my best. And he... Let's rest go, well, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> the Doctor is seeing him stand there. Ah, you're not supposed to be on the bridge. <laughs> kind of just like escort him out and he says, oh, yes, of course, of course. Um, so we'll cut to our final scene. Um, Sally Ride gliding amongst the stars towards uh, Deep Space Five, your original destination. Mm -hmm. They are now expecting uh, a lot of refugees, which they are able to accommodate for. A um, bunch of war criminals. Mm -hmm. What you have discovered is that this is a rogue faction that uh, of military, uh, made up a lot of mercenaries. The Zakdorn government has declared this general a criminal. Mm. Apparently, he's a zealot that believes that when the Zakdorn became a member of the Federation, they were instantly weakened. Of course. And according to this general, he believes that the recent news of a destruction of a galaxy-class starship was all the, all the momentum he needed to point at the Dominion and say, oh yeah. my god, we, don't mm. we need to defend yeah. ourselves. The Federation can't defend us. Playing upon the fears, was able to rally and make some black market purchases. Mm -hmm. He's got a lot to answer for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you're in your ready room right now, Captain, and uh, you hear uh, a priority one message from Starfleet coming in. Send it through. Am I in the room by myself? Yeah, I'm assuming you're in the room. Uh, yeah, I'm assuming you're at your desk. Okay, sure. You see Admiral Nash. Face appears on the, on the screen. <coughs> Admiral? Captain. How can I help? Well, I have just read your mission debriefing. It's a hell of an adventure you just had, Captain. You're not wrong, yeah. Did I read that correctly? Biogenic weapons? Unfortunately, you did. I've also been analyzing some of the uh, data we've been getting from your sensor readings. What I'm about to tell you is not to leave this room. Understood. I'm assuming you're alone? Yes, it's a secure channel. For the past six months, Starfleet scientists have been monitoring strange cosmic phenomenon. Now, for a while, it's all been hypothesis, conjecture, and so on. But what we've started to notice is inexplicably, gravitational forces have been pulling celestial bodies from their orbits, from their alignments, We've recorded seven instances, and yours makes the eighth. And at the moment, we have no explanation for it. 
Is there any link between them? Do you think that this could be caused by some sort of advanced science that we're not aware of, we can't detect? I'm not sure if the phenomenon's natural or not. Everything seems to suggest that it's not. The Vulcan Science Academy seems to think that it's a natural occurrence of some kind. Or at least it's not man-made, so to speak. Right, right, it could be. Wow, this is incredible. Admiral. It's pretty fascinating, that's for sure. Yeah. It's a good thing we've got y'all out there to record this. We'll do what we can to get as much information about these phenomena as we can. Hopefully we won't be as close as we were this last time to anything else we encounter. You did good, Captain. Thank you, Admiral. And uh, do me a favor. Give Commander Rue my compliments. I will be sure to do that, Admiral. It's possible I was wrong about that. Just like a little smile without, without trying mm. to show too much of like, <laughs> yeah, you fucking were. Mm. None of, not too much of that, but just a, li just a little bit like, <laughs> whatever you say, Admiral, sure. Proceed to Starbase 5 to acquire new armaments. Starfleet out. When the transmission ends, when it ends on that note, Captain, as you lean back in your chair, hearing the words, report to Starbase 5 to acquire new armaments, immediately you hear Pranaj's voice in the back of your mind. Make sure she stays a science vessel. And that's where we end tonight. Ah, goosebumps everywhere. Yeah. Great. Oh. Great job. All right. Nice. Good job, everyone. That's wow. the end of our first episode Whoa. on Shield of Tomorrow. The name of that. The part Pull. Three. Oh, part episode three, one, the, the Pull. Pull. Part three. Yeah. Ah. Part three. Yes, indeed. Oh, um, that was a damn fun game, you guys. Everybody did their part. Everyone kept people alive. Young Give Nancy MVP. Uh, I, yeah. I actually kind of did the other thing a little bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rue beat the unholy yeah. hell out of people. Um, so that's going to be it for us tonight. We, again, pushed past to, we are at 1 a.m., so that was a late cool. game for us. Wow. Um, uh, but uh, catch us at Comic-Con, guys, if y'all are going. We're going to be there. We're going to be all hanging out. Oh, we would thanks. love to see, we would love to see you guys and talk to you guys. Um, we've been getting a lot of questions if the panel is going to be recorded or not. I wish I had an answer for you. Uh, Comic-Con's got weird philosophies about <laughs> about recording panels, but we'll see. I'm sure someone will record something. I'm sure Critical Scope will probably record, <laughs> have somebody record the panel. But um, but uh, don't worry, we're going to be back uh, next week. Uh, there'll be some really, really rad announcements uh, this coming Wednesday. Um, things will be in place and uh, some surprises that I'll finally be able to share with everybody. I've been sitting on this since the show launched and I've been desperate to share it with anybody. Um, <laughs> I can't say it we just yet. Like, no. We don't even know. So we, get yeah. off the stream and then you we guys can don't like, even know. No, um, wait, yeah. not strong even arm no, him no, into it. telling us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so not we'll, gonna say anything. I'm yeah. not gonna say Set anything. Set the cameras before Eric can say something. Tell <laughs> him. <laughs> um, so thank you again for tuning in tonight, guys. Catch us next Wednesday. We will be back again for another episode of Shield of Tomorrow. Until then, hey, League Frequencies yes. closed. Thanks for tuning in to Shield of Tomorrow. If you enjoyed this, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. We'll be here every week with the ongoing adventures of the USS Sally Ride. New episodes air on Geek and Sundry Twitch and Alpha every Friday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you'd like to see more, you can start your free 30-day trial on projectalpha.com.